Hello, everybody. Okay, so um, ho hold on just a second. Well, never mind. Um, <laughs> sorry. Ho hold on just a second. Oops. Everybody, welcome. Let me see your comments here. Okay. Um, I missed a call. But anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is I don't want anybody to grab this link. He's probably waiting. Chris, I apologize. I'm going to put the link in here. And nobody's going to get on stage except for Chris Proudfoot. Um, Chris, uh, look in the audience and grab this link. Just give me one minute. Uh, okay, hold on a minute. Okay. I'm not letting anybody else up except Chris because he I was over on and I, I'm sorry I didn't say hello to everybody else. Hey Katie. Um um okay, so y'all can grab that link. I had to drop it in the chat because I'm sorry I don't know how to um send it to the phone or to the messenger. So there it is right there. Everybody in chat, I'm going to ask you to be um, polite. Just let me get through this, please. Um, and I appreciate you all being here. Um, Chris told me he wanted to come on here. So, um, okay. Okay. All right. Can you just show me your face? You can cover it back up if you will. If it's, if, I mean, I know it's really you, but because you called, but if you can, you just show me your face and then you can put your screen back down if you want to before you go up. It says, oh, the device is not connected. That's what it's showing. Device is not connected. Mm hmm. It might take a minute because the device is not connected. All right, I, I sent another link. I don't know if they have to go out and come back in or what, but the device is not connected. It's not showing connected. Okay, are you there now? Can you show me your face? Oh, there you are. Thank you. Okay. I see Katie. Hold on. Hi. Hello. Okay. Um, I, I'm kind of surprised, but um, thank you and welcome for coming up here. I appreciate that. Um, how, are you, how are you feeling today? Pretty terrible, to be honest with you. 24 days in and there's a bunch of horrible things being said and a bunch of misinformation being spread and my son is still missing. And so it's, it's horrible. There's not a better word for it, to be honest with you. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm glad you come up here and I will, um, I ask my chat to please be respectful and I will let you say what you feel. And, you know, again, I wasn't expecting this, but you're more than welcome to say what you feel. And if it's okay, you know, um, I, I would like to ask some questions, but uh, I would like to talk about Sebastian and, um, you know, maybe we could just start there. Would that be okay? Yeah, I think Chris is still trying to join as well. Okay. I didn't know if he was, yeah, I didn't know. A lot of people are accusatory when we speak. It, oh, it's a lie. Oh, it's not us. And Yeah. Well, the truth is, is no matter what any of y'all think, I didn't do anything to my son. My husband didn't do anything to my son. We love him dearly, and we are doing everything that we can to try and find him and bring him home. And his father loves him dearly as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I... I, you know, there's a lot of questions that people have and a lot of what ifs. And, you know, I know sometimes it's it's tough. I mean, I've seen a lot of cases like this and I know 
I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Let me say that. I would not want to be in your shoes. I don't want um, anybody to have to be in my shoes, to be honest with you. It's nothing any parent should ever have to go through. Right. Right. Um, you know, I've... <laughs> I've, I've seen in my own family, um, you know, I've actually had a runaway and I ended up murder and I know it's not the same. It's not my child. Um, although I have lost a child and this is not about me. It's about Sebastian, but I will tell you, nobody should have to sit in your shoes. There's not words that I can say. Um, but also I do have an autistic son and I know many do. I'll drop their link again. I'm dropping it again. I think she's having a bad signal. I don't know where she's at. She may be where she can't get the signal good. Here she is back. Okay, Katie. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> and you may have a bad signal somewhere. I don't know if you're having like rain or anything, but it keeps going in and out, but that's okay. Um, but anyway, it, you know, the main thing is people just have a lot of questions and just trying to make sense of everything. And uh, you're here. Okay, Chris, um, I'm dropping the link again. I told nobody not to get it, but you. Here you go, sir. Oh, drop again. Sorry. There you go. Uh, if you'll just click on that. But I do, you know, it, it, uh, still with anything that we personally go through, there's nothing. It's not the same. And I understand that. And so I am very sorry. I'm very sorry for, for you all, all three of you. I can feel. I can feel when his dad talks, Seth, I can feel that pain. And, and you know, it's just different. I'm not trying, again, to accuse, like I said, anybody. I'm just trying to make sense of everything. And that's all I can say. I just, I can't be fake. I have to be honest, you know. So. Well, it's your opinion and you're entitled to it, obviously, but... I can tell you that the pain that his father and I and even my husband are feeling right now is immeasurable, to be honest with you. And I have never in my life would I have ever dreamed that this would be a reality. Yes, ma'am. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody ever thinks this will happen to them. Hey, Chris. Hey. Um, yeah, you, you surprised me calling me, <laughs> you surprised me calling me, but I'm glad I could bring you on and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, talk about this. A lot of people's just interested. I know it's irritating and, um, I, I just, I, I know it's irritating, uh, me included. I know I am too, but we're just all there's no, we all have opinions and there's no stone we can leave unturned. We have to think outside the box. And I know it's irritating to y'all. I know it's irritating to everybody, but we all want Sebastian found. And, um, you know, I just told Katie, you know, we just have to go with, we all have our opinions and they may not always be good, but, you know, my heart's in the right place, but Go ahead and um, I'll let you start or whatever you want to do. So, there's Tom too. Um, do me a favor. I got to drop out of this. I got to make a phone call real quick and I will be back. This is my okay. call. I don't, okay. care. I, don't, I don't miss this phone call because it's my daughter. No, you go I ahead. Come go back ahead. and hang tight. Give me about five, 10 minutes. I'll be right back. You're fine. You're fine. We'll be here. Um, Is that yeah. good? You're still, you're okay. Hold on. Hello? That's me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock you off for a minute. You just come back when you're ready. Okay. 
Um, so I think he's on mute. Okay. So Katie. That, that'll okay. clarify that side of the question everybody's been asking. No, he does not have a restraining order against from his daughter. He speaks to her just to go ahead and clear that one out. Because I know there's been a lot of talk about that as well. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, he still speaks to her on the phone, as y'all see. Absolutely. Yeah. That little girl is precious and loved, just like Sebastian. Yeah. So, somebody's wanting to know, um, that question's kind of up a couple of times, and I don't mean to be rude, I'm just going to ask that. Um, I have saw it, like, do y'all, so, do, do you not call her your y'all's daughter since y'all call him y'all's son? We do, and a lot of people are reading into it. It's just uh, we talk. Our boy, our girl, my son, my daughter, his son, his daughter. I mean, we just, they're our children, but our children also have other parents as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, both both of our children have more than just two parents. Yeah, and I, I know you probably have been asked this on several channels. Y'all have been on several channels. Um, is, is there a reason that Chris um, hasn't seen him since? I know it had to do with the work, but like, um, why did he say he hadn't seen Sebastian since um, the 1st of February? Because that's the truth. He hadn't seen him since the beginning of February. I mean, is there a reason for that? He's working three and a half hours away. He don't come home after work. So was he, I mean, and, and I'm not... I mean, I'm just wondering, like, was he gone for like three weeks or two, two and a half weeks or something like that? He'd been gone since the beginning of February was the last time he was actually home. Christopher was actually home. And yes, he did see Sebastian when he come home. Okay. Um, it's, you know, it's just part of it when, when you work away, you know, you, you see each other. We yeah. can, in, but he doesn't, it's, it's, it's a lot to travel back and forth all the time. Like that's not a trip that you can make, you know, to and from every day by any means. Oh, I, I get that. That's not something you want to do every day. That would take up your whole, your whole time. Um, but did he like never come, like never come home on the weekends? Like when you had Sebastian or anything like that? Well, yeah, that's why he saw him in the beginning of February, but it wasn't every weekend. Okay. Because he okay. doesn't, he works on weekends too a lot, so he can't just come home every weekend. But when he can, he does. He comes home and sees him. Yeah. They actually, they have a pretty good relationship. Did he talk on the phone with Sebastian while he was at work? He does. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um... He wants to see if you can drop the link again. I think. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Here we go. Okay. Mm, no, they they talk regularly. Okay. Yeah. There we go. All right. There we go. A lot of people have their opinions, but Sebastian's got a good bond with both dads. Yeah. Thank you. I'm trying to make sure I drop it again because I want to make sure he sees it. I'm not fancy like everybody else, so I just need to make sure I get it down there. That's what I was doing was watching to see if he was coming. Oh, there he is. Look. Watch it over here. Okay, I'm watching over there. Okay, so um, where do you want to start at, Chris? I was just, like, just asking little simple questions or, you know, whatever about your work and stuff. Like, did you talk to Sebastian and, you know, stuff like that. But um, um, basically, I know it's a three and a half hour drive. You was at work. Is there a reason that, um, okay, so are you working now or are you just taking off or anything like that? Like for a certain amount of time? Uh, so is this to me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So are you asking me that or is one of your, your No, I just, I, I'm asking you that. I just wondered. Okay. Like if you, I, I was just wondering like if you, like are you, um, in fact, let me just, I'll turn my chat off for just a minute so I don't get pre- No, 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 don't, no, no, don't turn your chat off. Leave it on. It's fine. 
Okay. No, I mean, I'm, that way you can get all these questions coming in because, like I said, I told you, I gave you my word. I come on your show. I would answer questions. People ask the questions. But keep in mind, like I told y'all from the very beginning, I'm brash, I'm direct, but I'm respectful. And I ask for the same in everybody else. Yeah, and I, I told them a while ago, just please be respectful because I wasn't expecting this. Like, please be respectful, y'all. Because so, so one one thing right now, I'm gonna tell you right now, really irks me with some of these folks that want to follow these YouTube, and I'm I'm very honest about this. Somebody says I won't talk to men. I, not I that I don't want to talk. Right. And it's that. not that I don't want to talk to men. I have talked to more law enforcement men agencies in the past 24 days than I've probably ever talked to in my entire life. Same thing goes for women. So, no, I don't have a problem talking to a man or talking to a woman. I appreciate everybody's assumptions, or concerns, innuendos, whatever they want to be. But at the same time, I vet who I talk to. I'm not just going to open up and talk to anybody. Um, and I will put this out there. JLR, everybody wants me to talk to this guy. Explain to me, Smiley, you will probably have a better understanding of this. Explain to me why I should talk to JLR. Um, I just really wish you would because he does, because he does go out everywhere and he he wants the truth i mean and he may not get the truth out of you but i have seen him literally go in places deep like scary places and like really just try to get the truth and try to like follow people that's just taking him in the woods or whatever show him places whatever that he didn't know from adam he goes from one place to another he may be on a plane to mexico next time he might be in california whatever and you know i mean he's grown a lot i just think a lot of people don't give him a chance that's just my honest opinion right. saying, do you know why people don't want to give this man a chance well go ahead and tell me i mean i want your opinion so i'm going to tell you my personal opinion okay Okay, this is my my personal opinion. This is nobody else's, not my wife's, not anybody else's. My personal opinion. Okay. So I did my I did my due diligence and I read up on Jonathan Lee Rich, mm -hmm. Rich is excuse me. I I read up on him. Not necessarily the best character in the world. When you start reading and the first thing comes up, uh, everything that you can find on this individual now. I don't know him, Adam from Eve. I really don't. He don't know me, Adam from Eve. But when he opens his mouth and goes out there and starts spreading lies, and yes, lies, because unless you got hardcore evidence that I'm an abusive husband, abusive father, I've got a, a restraining order against me, unless you got proof, don't open your mouth. Because it's real simple. I don't have any of that good luck finding it i've never lied to y'all i've been open and honest people don't like my answers so people want to come back with their own assumptions and i'm so so sorry that i can't open up and give you every little piece of evidence and every little detail that we know i am terribly sorry it sucks because when it does and it can't come out my only question to everybody else is when are you going to start issuing public apologies? That's that's not to you. That is to everybody that wants to come out and badmouth people that don't understand and don't have a clue what's going on. And I think that's pretty fair. Yeah, I can understand that. But let me let me ask you this: um, yes, if um, if somebody has over a hundred thousand people, why do you care what their past is or what they say if they can help you get Sebastian's name out? Um, so when you, when you and and I'll be honest with you, I've heard some of yours mm -hmm. and the toxicity that comes out of what you guys projected about me has only toxified everybody else that puts in a lead or says well check out the stepfather do this do that call law enforcement check this out do this 
You take a body. Every time something gets reported, a body comes away from the investigation to vet because they are required to do so. And it sucks because the same answers are the same across the board. Why they won't come out and tell in the public eye, hey, all three parents have been completely vetted. All three parents have been, you know, questioned. All of this. Why they won't come out and say it? I understand to a point. I do. But it sucks at the same time because it's extremely hurtful that we, me, my wife, and Seth, have to live in this life, even when this is over, however it ends, we have to live this life, not everybody else. Quite frankly, Sebastian's going to find out what everybody's been saying about his parents, and I can't even imagine how distraught he's going to be, but we have to find him. I mean, yeah. and it sucks. Yeah, you have to find him, and that's the most important thing. Yes. All the rest is going to fall into place later, but the most important thing is he has to be found, and he has to be found regardless, period. I want right. to just side note, he's not clapping, y'all. He's not what? People keep saying that he's clapping. He's not clapping. That's just background noise. Oh, I don't hear any. Cl yeah, y'all. Some people have heard they're clapping, and that's fine. I'm, I guess I'm currently working. Yeah, y'all. Now, no. where, where, understand people, where I work is really nobody's business. Um, and I would hope you would respect that because I'm not this criminal, I'm not this monster that everybody wants to believe. But I do believe in res privacy and respect, and it goes both ways. Yeah, I don't feel anybody should be going to anybody's job or anything like that. No, I don't. I don't feel anything like that. Uh, but as far as JR, I mean, you know, that's up to you who you speak with or anything like that. I do appreciate you holding up to your bargain, speaking to to me. Um, some of the harder questions, you know, I, I, you know, it has awesome. nothing to do with you. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know, as far as all that, that has nothing to do with, with you. It, it, it's just a matter of how I put it to every, every case that I care about, um, you know, and there's no reason to be angry about it. It's just something, whether it's me, you or whoever. And that happens to our, look, I had a grandson that went missing for a couple of hours here, not very long ago, back last year. And I know how, how that feels. And, you know, we can sit and say, this happened, this one, this happened to this one, and this one don't know and whatever. But, you know, I'm very passionate about these. I've been through a lot of tragedies that a lot of these people that are my subs don't know that I've been through. And a lot I have told them. Um, but, you know, I, I understand mine is not yours. I understand that. But I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate about Sebastian. And I do have to ask these questions. And they're questions you don't like. And whether you're in here. No, it's, not. It's, not that I, it's not that I don't like them. I don't want anybody to start thinking that there's not questions I don't like. I, I've told you all from the very beginning, I welcome all, all of your questions. The only thing is because of an ongoing investigation, there are certain things that we are not and have been told by law enforcement. Do not get into specifics because it could jeopardize the investigation. People don't like that. And I am sorry. Um, I And I'm speaking for myself. I'm not going to speak for my wife. I'm not going to speak for Sebastian's father, Seth, his mother, his sister, or anybody for that matter. But, you know, I do welcome the hard questions. I do. Well, and I'm, and I'm OK with it. And for the record, I don't have a problem talking with JLR or anybody else. Now, if you're one of these shows that are for profit, you want to talk, you go out and publicly announce it publicly that any money that you make on the show, as long as me, my wife are involved, that money gets directly posted to signs, 
flyers or billboards to help find our son, I'll do it. But if it's for personal gain, it ain't happening. Yeah. I just went out today. I mean, I take money off my own stuff. I just went out today and got a bunch of flyers. And I suggested with, I suggested with, um, because Seth wanted, I heard him on another show. But anyway, I, I suggested same thing I did with Summer Wells. Every time you mail something out, get it in the mail, send it out with bills, send it to whoever you write to, do whatever. I'm very passionate about that. I'm very passionate about boots on the ground, going out, handing out the flowers. I don't care if they get thrown in the, in the trash, whatever, five minutes later. They see the picture, they see the photo. As long as they see and say, hmm, and take a glance at it, there is a chance for me. That to believe or something, say something, whatever. And, you know, but nobody is going to dictate my money because let me tell you something. I've been in this for, you know, three years now, banging my head against the wall, being called everything, drug here, drug there, with this stupidity stuff, doing summer wells, and not ask for a penny. And I figured, well, if you might can't beat them, join them, meaning... First, I did it to put my cash app up for a a point one day, and then I took it back down. And the next thing, I'm just like, no, they're like, you need to monetize. I'm like, you're right. I'm going broke. Trying to just keep the word out or whatever. Like somebody just gave me $10. I spent that today in gas and going and getting flyers and doing whatever just on Sebastian. That's where I know you just said that. So Right. But that that you're not monetizing on you're utilizing right. it to do something to put it forward. Right. But those people who want to pocket money, on the other hand, I'm not about pocket. I'm, I'm not. I'm not lining your pockets. Right. No. It, not it, you know, and that. I'm. I get that. I'm, I'm going to be very respectful because I don't want to say it like I would normally say it. But Don't I tell everybody. My, well, my, no, because if there's, there are some folks that don't like cussing. Well. And and, and but understand something, and I'm I'm gonna. I'm respectful about it because I'm being positive here. But if you don't feed me, finance me, or sleep with me, you know, I don't I don't owe anything to anybody at that point. Well, you know? I think I think we kind of think of it there, you know. And See? I don't <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree there, you know. And that brings me to say, hey. You shouldn't, you should not care what people think. And you, but JLR back to him again. And I hate to keep bringing him up because you're on here and I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. And I want no, to, that's funny, isn't it? not JLR, but what I want to say is one other thing you have to take in consideration him going to all these places, not just to help Sebastian, but all these other people. That's not free. You've got to remember that that's not free. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Right, but if, if I'm if I'm on his show, we're talking about my son's case. Mm -hmm. I understand. That's I there there is a situation of my son, not everybody else's. You know, and I know he's doing his thing and I appreciate it. What I don't appreciate is some of the stuff he does put out there that he absolutely when I've asked the guy, I said, Do you have proof? Do you have physical evidence? That I am anything what you say. Right. And he doesn't. So then keep my name out of your mouth. Right. It's real simple. And then you don't want him, like if he does this, because he's there now, so you don't want him. And I don't know. I'm not going to talk to him on the phone or anything. I don't do that. But, like, um, I just like what he does. But so I'm just asking, because he'll hear this. So are, are you – so – and you don't want him to – uh, monetize on that what you're he's talking about your son correct yeah if he's going to monetize take that money go buy flyers go buy yard signs put it on the billboards okay all right i mean I and that's and, and that and that's fair i'm asked he wants me on the show that's fine then i want to i want a i want a public acknowledgement that you're going to donate every dollar that you make off of my son's show to finding him okay that's fair yeah, 
Okay. And I get that. I get that. Now, can I say one other thing? Because yes, before, before we kind of get started, <laughs> the, only reason, yes, the only reason is because I, fair is fair. And I, I, I yes. will say this. Um, and I said I would treat you fair. And I will. I try to treat everybody. I do try to treat everybody. Now, whether I have opinions or I don't, none of that matters. Okay. But I, I want to say this. Uh, like my heart really hurts for Seth. It really does. It hurts for it hurts for you. It hurts for Katie. It hurts for everybody because no matter what happened. Now listen, listen. No matter what happened, if it was a, if it and don't I don't don't jump on me yet. I'm not finished with my statement. Oh, I'm not. You're fine. <laughs> if, it was, if it was an accident, if it was, uh, uh, he walked off. If he crawled. If it was no matter what it was. Right. Um, I, I I feel for everybody. Okay. I feel for everybody. But um, this is just, it, it, it's insane. It's insane. I, I, I feel for Seth, but what I'm, I feel for all of you, but I can feel his pain so much more. But what I feel for is I do feel for his mom. And I'm going to say this when she said, I read, she said, can y'all stop or ask Chris to stop saying that that's his son? Because it's not, and it kills Seth, even though he don't say anything. I just wanted to say what you had to say about that. Well, let's put it this way. I'm a stepdad mm -hmm. to a 15-year-old young man. Okay? Mm -hmm. I came in Sebastian's life, roughly, he was like seven, eight-ish. Um, and I helped raise him, and I still help raise him. And I have a daughter, since everybody wants to know, who lives with my ex-wife out in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Her mother has another man that lives with her. Now, whether or not they're married, I don't know. That's not my business, personally. Okay? Yeah. Last time I checked, they were not married. But my daughter refers to him as daddy. Now... What does a child calling a person got to do with anything? Because as long as a child is being correctly raised and not hurt and loved, then what does it matter? He's my stepson. He does not call me dad. He does not call me father. He doesn't say it. He calls me Mr. Chris. I, I have always that. left that open for him. He does not have to call me anything he does not want to, except for late for dinner, because that ain't happening. Right. Right. Okay. Even Seth calls Chris his dad, his stepdad. Right. So his mother All, has her opinions, yeah. and that's that. You know, and unfortunately, I hate that family disputes the, I'm, and, and I don't care if what it is when something in your life becomes so publicized and it's so dramatic people find a way to turn and find ways to just make it the worst thing even worse just because and, and it sucks it truly sucks I personally think we should all be working together to find Sebastian because Sebastian is an awesome person who deserves to be home. Katie, let me ask you the night of Sunday night. Um, when you said there was a noise, what type of noise do you think that was that you heard? I'm not honestly sure. It sounded like he was messing with stuff in his room, which was not uncommon, which is why I said, hey, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you're supposed to go to sleep. Okay. So you didn't check on him at that time, but did you did you check on him at midnight? Did you flip the light on and look to see if he was in the bed at midnight when you got up to go to bed? No, um, and because I didn't have any reason to. You know, when he was little, I used to check on him all the time, but he's older now and he's 15 and y'all can figure out why a mother may not want to necessarily pop into a teenage boy's room unexpectedly. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, when, 
when uh, Seth said that um, when he came, that everything was in pristine condition except for his room. Like, I know that the LE was there and he said that the LE was there. Well, I mean, what did he mean by that? Was that just like the bed was unmade or, you know, where you looked under things or was it like, what did, what did he mean by that? Sebastian, Sebastian's room is always a little bit messy, but um, um, even more so with all the people coming in, all the law enforcement coming in and looking through things, me looking through things, like everybody was searching everything. So I have I have a question then real quick. So yeah. you're asking that question. Is that because there's somebody's trying to insinuate that we tried to cover something up because the house was clean? Or no, no, no. I, I mean, just, and, and, and please understand why I'm asking that question because whether my house is dirty or clean really doesn't matter. But okay, I'm just trying to understand this. Okay, well, I'll explain it to you. It's because okay. I have a son that is autistic. He's 28 now, but he, but I know it's all different um, types of children on the autism uh, spectrum, but, but. They like stuff in order. And so I was just wondering, um, like, I was just trying to think back and I'm just wondering, like, um, what did Seth mean by that? Like, was it just because the bed was messed up? And then I know the cop, like doing these cases and stuff, I know the cops. So, I mean, it's not like you have to get paranoid that I ask you that. It's just, I was asking that because I was thinking back on things, not only personally, but because... I was just trying to make sense of, and then when Katie said, well, it was just he, his room's out of order and stuff, I'm just thinking, well, you know, some kids, I, maybe they do, you know, if they're, if they're autistic, you know. I don't know. I just asked that question. When I ask yeah. questions, I just, let, listen, let me just tell you this. When I ask questions, you don't have to necessarily, look, I'm not the police, okay? And you don't have to worry about how I ask questions. It's just, I also work for a retention uh, center for 11 years and it was my job to retain people and think outside the box and that's what I do it's a habit so there's right that. so me asking that question back mm -hmm. is because you've got a lot of viewers I'm not saying your viewers so let's make that super clear so that viewers don't get that construed with anything but there's so many people out there with their insinuations and because you asked that question it would not surprise me to see a comment well that's because they cleaned the house before the cops got there trust me we have seen it all heard it all people are putting stuff out there that is completely obtuse from from the truth and it, it is ridiculous yeah. that's why i asked that question yeah well you can ask me anything you want i mean I, I don't mind explaining why i asked i just don't want you to think i'm asking things in nefarious ways i'm just simply asking um i'm trying to think because i have been sitting here thinking for days and i have my own things and sometimes they have not been good i'll just be straight up honest with you because i'm not gonna be fake and try to hide anything or whatever you said yourself you seen things that i said um i was not too happy the other night when somebody took my question and asked you and that was a personal question when you said you you know and, and i didn't like how you answered it to be frank with you what what did i say do you remember what it was please um it was something about <laughs> i'm pretty hurt about that myself and um i didn't like that because you knew it was coming but i didn't ever expect it was coming from somebody else you know but they did that because they was butt hurt at me anyway but that's okay it's okay it's not about me fighting with anybody else it's about sebastian here and um you know, I just didn't, I just felt some kind of type of way because it's the way you answered it and you already had it in your private, private messages. But, but none of that matters. What, what matters is Sebastian. And I want to know, tell me, Chris, can you tell me about the snake? Tell me about the snake. Why did you get rid of the snake? Or y'all got right or decided together or tell me about the snake. I okay, so, right. So to, to answer your question about the snakes, we, well, I'll start at the beginning of the snakes. So I view long time ago i actually used to breed reptiles snakes cargo reptile all kinds of stuff you name it just about reptiles i used to breed it love reptiles one of my favorite things mm -hmm. uh in california we actually had a snake um 
they had a bearded dragon. It died. Mm -hmm. Um, but we wound up getting a snake. Well, Sebastian liked it. They is me and Bubba. We had a beardy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, but we had a salmon team boa. Uh, Sebastian liked the idea of having a snake. Well, oh, he loved that thing. He he's never had one that was his snake, his own snake. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, mind you, when I do something, I go all in. I just, I don't half-ass do it. So, <clears throat> you know, I bought, purchased, however, I've got friends that are in that world still that are in that business, and we all chit-chat. And, um, and uh, I wind up coming across, basically, I had like about 30 snakes at one given time. Mm -hmm. um, all of them were ball pythons mm -hmm. i didn't do have any, i didn't have anything retic i didn't have anything massive poisonous or anything like that well sebastian was infatuated with one of the snakes that one of the breeders i deal with had and it's the picture that the snake that you see in the picture that's wrapped around his arm that yeah. is his personal pastel ball python named brownie that is his personal snake. He loved them. Um, the downside, like it got to a point with work, with mom's work, my work. And I told Sebastian, I said, you know, having a snake, snake means responsibilities. Mm -hmm. You're going to clean it. You're going to have to feed it. You're going to water it. You're going to do all that stuff. And if he actually you don't, did. He what, Katie? I said, and he did for a little while. And then he stopped. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and parenting is, and, and I think everybody understands this. When you're a parent, you're not your, your kid's best friends. You're not. That's not what your job is. Your job is to be a parent. And I told Sebastian, if you don't, she's gone. And he thought I was kidding. Nope. So when I got rid of one, I got rid of them all. Now, when I say got rid of them, a friend of mine, local in Nashville, he got them because he's a good breeder, great guy. And he's like, if you ever want them, come get them, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, man, appreciate it. But right now, he's not he's not doing what he's supposed to do. So right now, we're not going to just hang tight with him. So we got rid of the snakes. So did um, his dad not want them or you couldn't take them to his dad's or anything so he could see them when they're there? I just wonder. No, his well, dad couldn't take them. <laughs> well, his dad wasn't going to take 30 snakes. I mean, because you know, 30 snakes, you're talking a big old rack, um, all kinds of stuff. I mean, in, you've got to deal with the food, which is going to be rats and things like that. People, yeah. people, people don't want to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just a question. I mean, I know I wouldn't. It's just a question. <laughs> it was a question because I wondered, like, you know, I, I could tell in the picture he really liked it. Um, so that was one of his, you know, pets. And so I just wondered. Um, I mean, like, to this day, I can I call my buddy. Mm -hmm. You know, if Sebastian wants to go, I can call him up. We'll head over to his snake, his, uh, his big old snake. He's got a building full of them. And that's where ours are. And yeah. he's like, you want to see him? Just come on over, man. Whatever. Just call me up. Cool. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, it, it's. It wasn't like he would never get to see it again. It was just. Right. Lessons, yeah. lessons have to be taught. I'm a very firm believer. You know, it is what it is. You know, is it always gone forever? No, not necessarily. But you're going to earn it back. It's not just going to be handed to you. How did you discipline him with, since he, you know, how, how did you discipline him? Sebastian in general? Yeah. Well, that depends. The crime, the punishment has to fit the crime, so to speak. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you an example, cleaning his room. Mm -hmm. And People are going to sound, make me sound like I'm so horrible, but I promise you, folks, you try this with your kids one time, and you won't ever have a problem with this again. 
So if you tell them to clean their room and they go in there and they clean their room, well, they say, come out, well, it's clean. And you go in there and you go to check the room and the room's not clean. Okay. Thought I told you to clean this room. Uh, uh, you told us the room is clean. Did you not? Well, yes, sir. Okay. Now I'm going to clean your room. And you know exactly what that means. I go in and I go grab a trash bag. I walk back in that bedroom. If it's on the floor and it's not supposed to be on the floor, it's not picked up and put in the right places, goes in the trash bag. If it's not important enough for you to take care of and pick up, I'll take care of it for you. Go in the trash bag. Tie it up. I've done this to him twice. One time, mom talked me out of it. The other time, Sebastian, here's the bag. Go put it in the trash can. And then you're going to take the trash can to the street. And after the after that, Sebastian, did you clean your room? Well, your mom told you to clean your room. Did you clean the room? Yes or no? Well, yes, sir. Is it clean the way it's supposed to be? Well, no, sir. Then I suggest you go back in there and clean it, or I'm coming in there in the next 10 minutes, and I'm cleaning. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hauls butt to that bedroom, and by golly, that room is clean the way it's supposed to be. Now, it sounds crazy, but I promise you, you try it with your kids, man, your kids are going to be like, oh, my God. They ain't kidding. It works, it works amazing. Do you feel like, um, like that he was ever a burden at all on you or your relationship, either one of you? Was my stepson a burden in my marriage? Yeah. No. Oh. No. No. Um, the burden, so what has always been a struggle and anybody who's married and has, you know, you're a step parent, okay? That struggle of That's being struggle able to, uh, yes, yes, very much. And then you've got discipline on top of it, and you know what what you can do, what you can't do, with you know, because you've got the other parent and this parent. That's always a struggle. When you can get on the same page with each other, mm -hmm. and finally everybody understands it right man it is a beautiful beautiful picture beautiful now am i saying everything's sunshine and rainbows no it's not right but it ain't high tides and tsunamis either so if you and his mom ever argued and that's in every marriage like would sebastian ever jump between y'all like physically yeah no <laughs> we don't fight and yell and scream or any of that like violent type stuff we tend to take it behind closed door in our bedroom and have a conversation because the children should never be exposed to that that's between us not them and first off like this i'm gonna make this real clear crystal clear i was always raised you never strike a woman and but I have taught to. that to Sebastian. You will never strike a woman. Mm -hmm. Period. And I'm not accusing you of so, but again, at, um, Seth has said that Katie, and again, I'm sorry, Katie, that um, that again, there was a time, and this is a long. People can change, but right. again, it's been said that. Katie has struck Seth. And that again, that's a long time. I wasn't there. So <laughs> no. Um and I wasn't there either for the record. So, <laughs> so, so maybe Katie should answer this. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no. this. That oh Lord. No. That um that is a whole nother thing that happened back then. Yeah. Well, well, that's what brought me to my question. So I was just wondering if, you know, Sebastian stepped in and then I had heard uh, at another place where Seth had said Sebastian would step in 
and I didn't even know if he was talking about that or not because I heard about that separate that Sebastian would step in and say, you know, don't do this to my dad or whatever. And he could be talking about something totally different. But, you know, again, I have to think and think all kinds of things in my head. So did he did did Sebastian have tantrums at all? And this is oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah. He's a, he's he's a kid. I mean, it, it's even when I came in the picture. I mean, his tantrums were pretty bad. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, to the point, I mean, he, so I'm not, I'm not dragging Seth, my his mom, his sister, my wife. I'm not dragging people through the mud. So what is in the past is the past. And that really needs to die. And I'm saying that for everybody to hear, to include all parties involved with this situation past is a past that needs to die let it be um but they at keep the same who's time rachel, so they keep saying who's rachel so you want to answer that for you tell them to yes, the past yes. okay so i got no problem rachel is that, my that third me. i didn't know about rachel so no 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 so here let me I'll, I'll, I'll make this easy for you so i've been married five times i'm on my fifth wife and she's gonna say you're final so let me make that clear. She's probably going to yell at me later that I didn't say final. Um, but I've been married five times. Okay. First time, her name was Vanessa. Second time, her name was Stephanie. Third time, her name was Rachel. Fourth time, her name is Nina. And I'll okay. gladly answer any questions in any of my marriage. Out of the four ex-wives, three of them to this day, I can actually pick up the phone, call, and we can have conversations. That's how good it is. Okay. My fourth ex-wife, which is the one I have with my daughter, sometimes we can have cordial conversations, sometimes we cannot. I will make that pause. Like, I leave that there. That's why we go to court. They they keep saying something about the story of Rachel. What is the story of Rachel? The story of Rachel. Um, maybe, maybe how y'all met and how maybe how long did y'all? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. This is the first time I'm hearing about Rachel because I haven't dug in that deep into anything. I'm just I don't know. Like how long was y'all married? Maybe and how was your relationship do y'all have any kids I, I don't know no, i'm just no, no i i have one biological child in this world one one and that was my fourth okay. wife okay uh um, the story with rachel is real simple uh we met um we were all friends we moved into we shared an apartment together it was a two bedroom two bath um, and somehow or another we wind up starting a relationship like things just happen i mean it, it whatever so yeah. we got married um and rachel took a job where she was working down in guantanamo bay cuba as a civilian mm -hmm. and while she was down in guantanamo bay i guess for promiscuity got the best of her and she decided to be unfaithful mm -hmm. we ended that relationship um she went back to cuba you know i uh packed up the house i put all her stuff in a storage unit gave one of her friends that lived in the area the key told her the combo set up the payment plan for her, everything like that um you know, as far as I know, she lives, I think it's in New Orleans now. Um, and I think she, she just had a second child. So she's got a little boy and I think a little girl now. Were you part of any of your, any, any the stepchildren's lives there in your other marriages? Yes. My, my fourth wife, Nina, she has two mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. Uh, those children's names don't even ask him. I'm not telling you because no, 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 well, that's I don't know what people digging into that. They don't need to be, those no, kids are no, not no, being drunk. Yeah. Um, 
Yes, I was very much involved uh, during the marriage while her and I were together with mm-hmm. the kids' lives. Um, it was a rough marriage. I mean, from from the word go, Nina and I both knew we probably should have never got married. But we did, you know. Um, but, I mean, still to this day, like I said, when things are good, I don't have a problem talking with the other two kids at all. You know, occasionally I see them in FaceTime videos when I'm talking with my daughter. Yeah. You know, but it's not... I, you know, they're good kids. They really are. So did Sebastian have any friends that he ever uh, brought over to the house? Like that y'all allowed, like, um, and it could be like, I heard Katie say somewhere too, maybe it was in one of the Facebook groups, but it was in writing. I didn't really hear her say it, but um, she wrote it down that she had other, or maybe it was in an interview. I don't know. Like, he had other friends, or you had other friends, Katie, with children like uh, him that had autism. So, did you ever have play dates? I guess is the right word. Um, where you try to get him together with other children like that, or maybe that was invited over to your house. Or can you give me a day, like what it was like for him around other children? Somebody outside the family. So Sebastian um, struggles with maintaining friendships with um, a lot of the children his age because um, even with the children that are similar, um, they tend to have different interests. Sebastian gets very um, uh, like single he... single mind tracked. Like if he's if yes. he's wanting to talk about like Minecraft, then he wants you to be a hundred percent all about the Minecraft. And so a lot of times, like other children will be like, "Yeah, that's cool, but I want to do this," and and he'll build. And so they wind up getting frustrated with each other, and that's where a lot of his like struggles making friends come into play, is In because personal space. he personal space. yeah personal space is also another part of it where he he. Um, disregards like what we call the personal bubble Mm -hmm. um just because he just doesn't have that awareness like he'll just be right here in your face (laughs) um but he's capable of getting along with other kids i mean and he does but typically for shorter periods of time um (coughs) at school he does pretty well with a lot of the kids um but even that you know they have to take breaks you know because not him but ever not just him but you know even the other kids they they each have their unique interests and their unique ways of thinking and doing things and so they they get to each other and they have fun and then you know something will happen and one or both will get frustrated and so they gotta you know time out and whatnot um you know we have met um some kids especially like because i like to take them out and go do things especially in like public settings like the festivals and in bowling and stuff like that to get them out and get them you know it gives an opportunity to interact and work on those uh like kind of social skills and and meeting people and and being appropriate when meeting people responding you know with appropriate emotions and stances you know like if someone's being polite and says hello to you to match that energy and not come at a different energy you know and we do we have like a scale that we work on you know like what is the problem that's frustrating you you know is it like a zero one two three and then okay well what's your response to that you know type thing so um yes he has interact and does interact with other children and people but he he struggles to form those like stronger bonds with people Mm-hmm. Was he starting to notice girls yet? I think so, although he's in denial. He yeah. doesn't want to tell mama that he likes girls. Yeah. Um, did, were y'all a part of a church or anything like that? Yes. So we we attend. Um, so, hold on. We attend church. Yes, we, yes, we do attend church. Now, are we tied to one particular church more so than others? Probably not. Um but we, if we go, we tend to frequent the one called Freedom Church. It's up in Gallatin, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Is that, did Sebastian like that? Did he like to go and um, 
Yeah, when he was in church, so the kids area, oh my God. Um, <laughs> They've got a phenomenal youth program. Yeah. I bet he liked to sing and, and uh, stuff like that, right? He likes dance. to dance. Yeah, dance. <laughs> I mean, now, granted, gr he, granted, he, what you call dancing, what I call dancing, and what he calls dancing, totally different. <laughs> he's he's definitely got a unique rhythm. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But he does love, he loves to dance. Yeah. And that makes me think, I mean, you know, just the music he said he liked Eye of the Tiger and different things. I mean, oh, it just makes me, you know, it just makes me smile. He's, he's, I just want them, to, I want them to find him. I mean, and I know you do too. It's just, we got to ask these questions and we got to look and search. Somebody was saying on uh, the Nancy Grace today. And then, by the way, is there any reason why y'all didn't go on that show today too? We were not invited. We didn't okay. know about it until after. Okay. Cause that's, that's what I heard. Yes. They said that he did throw tantrums. They did say that. Um, but, um, Okay, so um, they, there was a guy on there that said, and I'm sure y'all watched it, that said um, everything needs to be re-looked at, researched, but it, everything needs to be spread out more, more areas, you know. Um, We've been pushing to spread the search um, because with the amount of people that we've we've searched with and had search and all the volunteers and all the law enforcement with the area that they searched for so long we feel like like if he was that close to home we should have been able to find him and and so we're pushing we've been searching out farther than just like within the five mile radius but we've been pushing out and we've been searching farther away from the house looking for any signs and and posting those signs uh, all the way to the state line and then some in all directions now um did you <coughs> like like somebody thinks that um well, not somebody. People think that y'all have not been doing the flyers. I mean, but y'all have been doing the flyers. Is that correct? Absolutely, we have. You absolutely have. Okay. So, so let me let me help some people with some uh, information about things. When it comes to searching, um, flyers those signs that people have taken pictures and posted on Facebook that say mm -hmm. missing the yard signs. Yes. Those came from us. They my came mother, from my mother is a real estate agent. We've got some friends in the business that can help do things. And my mother was able to get the signs for us. So the signs have been distributed between me and Katie and my mother. We've got some really great friends in the family. We got a great community who we have handed signs out to, and they have gone out and placed them. Uh, flyers, we've had, I, I can't tell you the amount of support that the community has put together as far as helping us with these flyers. We go and we go to make copies of a flyer somewhere. And we asked them, we said, look, I just need to know how much it's gonna be for these, this many. And bless everybody that has done this because a lot of people will only have us pay for a hundred of them, but they'll give us 500 of them. Mm -hmm. We've got people in the community that when they hear it, they're like, no, 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 we're paying for that. Not y'all. We are. I'm like, no, I, I appreciate it. I really do. If anything, we'd like to give you some, you can pass them out, whatever. So it's been out there. The there's billboards across this entire state. Um, I can tell you personally, from the from Memphis, Tennessee, all the way to Nashville, going down 40, between 240 and I 40, there's at least seven billboards that were out there posting Sebastian. There was some in Rivergate, some in Madison. There's some out toward Knoxville. Um, I mean, the reach that we have gotten put out there, we've gotten a company that will have uh, in Spanish and in French. Oh, that the flyers needs to be done. Mm -hmm. are being pushed all the way up into Canada. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, we're we've got we're, we're reaching out. We've got great family and friends, and 
bless people out there. Like I said, it, there's if we never meet you, and I am sorry. I, I wish we could. I wish we could shake everybody's hand and give everybody a hug, regardless of how you feel or what you think. But the fact that you keep his name in the public view alone, we can't thank you enough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just I tell everybody every day, look, I don't care who does it. If I see it, you know, you might see on my community page, everybody's shared a hundred billion times. I just want his name and face out there, too. And whew, it's it's a lot. I, I, I seriously take I have a lot of passion for for these cases, the ones that I choose to do. Um I, I really do. I'm not big. I'm not. Spe I grew up. I was born and raised right there in Nashville. I have family right down from y'all. Um, and I have a teacher over at Beach High School. And, you know, I, I it, it means a lot to me, this case right here. And it touches my heart for so many different reasons. And, um, I, you know, I... I, I <laughs> It makes me want to cry right now. It, it does. It, you know, you have a beautiful son and a handsome son, um, a stepson, son, whatever you want to call it, Katie. And, um, you know, I, I, it breaks my heart. It does. I can't tell you. I'm, I'm nobody special. I just get on here. And I know how to use my mouth. And I think and I think outside the box and I will keep his name and everything out. Well, um, if you don't mind me, uh, so I don't know how to say this any other way. And I please forgive me because it's going to sound fine, like say it. Say well, it. It's going to sound very jerkish, but I don't want softball questions. People wanted to ask me the hard questions. By golly, let's get these hard questions out. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. but I just. Well, uh, ha, let, let me start. OK, ha, have you ever had CPS called on you before? Yes. OK. Okay, and you don't have to go into it elaborate or anything like that. I, I just, that was the question that I had. Um, and that happens, you know, sometimes, especially when you have a um, child who is, you know, has special needs and stuff. That's hard. I've had it, well, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've, I've had CPS called on me in two states, mm -hmm. New Mexico and Tennessee. And so, had, so, and that, did that include with Sebastian? Tennessee was Sebastian. Yes, ma'am. Okay. In fact, Sebastian here, I'll just, like I said, I got nothing to hide. So Sebastian went to school one day because he, we were at the house. He got in trouble. He didn't have a belt on. I was like, where's your belt? And got it. Whack. Kind of got him. So he goes to school and he tells the teacher, they're mandatory reporters. So the teacher reports it. Mm -hmm. That afternoon, CPS shows up to the house while we're actually sitting down to eat dinner. Now, mind you, 15 year old child he's not real happy because he's in trouble so he's being punished so he shows you know he makes a report they come to the house and the lady who comes to the house is the same lady we've had in, uh, she's had a case before um now the case that was before was something that didn't even didn't even happen and it's like three stories that was shoved into one. And when they finally got it debunked, they were like, oh, he's just, he just, he got, he got so mixed up in telling one story, it mixed into three and it caused a commotion. Well, that got, they canceled that out. So the one on me, she shows up and uh, I said, hey, how you doing? It's her again. She's like, oh, hey. She goes, hey, I, I'm already, don't, she's like, don't tell me anything, but I'm going to tell you what I know happened. And I said, okay. She goes, boom, boom, boom. She told me exactly what happened. I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, oh, my God. I said, yes, ma'am. This this is how it's been. Sebastian thought by telling on me, making it sound like I was so horrible. Oh, you cut out. You cut out just a minute. Um, you cut out. I can. Oh, there you are. Okay. That I was gonna get in trouble over something stupid. And I was like, no, Sebastian, you got punished, man. You, you got punished. And he was like, but, but, and I was like, you got punished. 
And the lady took him outside. She goes, Sebastian, just because you get in trouble and you get punished, you need to understand when you go and you say things about people and you lie and you fabricate things and you make it sound worse than what it is, sir, you can get in trouble for that. So we had a that happened. And the lady was like, I am so sorry. And I said, no, he's just a child. He's upset. It is what it is. I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. You know, he sat that back down at the dinner table and was like, see, eat your food. <laughs> and yeah. we went back and everything's been fine. Yeah. Well, uh, that girl wants to know what was he wearing when uh, they went to dinner. Maybe he returned if it was his favorite place, I guess, to the restaurant. Katie, do you uh, remember? We may have lost her. Oh. Um, hmm. I don't know. Yeah, she's been going in and out. Okay, we'll save, we'll save that. I'll just leave it up there so I don't forget or whatever. Um, was there a life insurance policy on him? I know people has been wanting to ask that. I'll just get that out of the way. Not that that's any of our business, but I guess if it has to do with him missing, that's what, why they want to know. It's just a simple yes or no. You don't. We don't have to go into whatever. And that could be for if you know whether he's got it from his real dad, you or, uh, you know, anybody. I'm just saying, does anybody know if there's one floating around out there anywhere? His father has one on him. Okay. That's good enough. Um, now, oh, Chris just dropped off again. Let me see if I can put this back in here. Sorry. And he may be back too. <laughs> Let's see. Paste. I'm sorry. I have to do it. Like for clarification, no, I did not allow him to beat my son with a belt. He did not beat my son with a belt. Um, okay. Uh, Josh wants to call in real fast. Let's see. Hold on a minute. Okay. Hold on. Just go. Okay. Um, Josh wants to call in real fast. He's been wanting to ask y'all a question, and I guess he can't get me to see it or something. So I just told him to call real fast if that's okay. Um, he texts me and I just happen to see it if that's okay. And nobody take this. Um, I'm trying to get this link back out. So Chris, um, what, what kind of stuff? Oh, no. Oh, I'm he's done. <laughs> he's probably going crazy i put the wrong phone number in there um anyway oh there he is oh there he is he's like he's gonna come up here just a second josh sorry i put the wrong phone i put the wrong number in there that's can you hear me i can yeah i put the wrong number in there so okay is chris, is chris still here uh, no, he, can you drop the link again? He fell down, but I, yeah, go ahead. Okay. When I spoke, when I was talking to Chris earlier and him and I were messaging, uh, and I asked him about DCS and he said, the only case that DCS has open is Here because Sebastian ran away. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, Chris, Josh was going to yes, call ma'am. me and I accidentally punched a, three instead of a two or whatever. And he jumped up here on panel. And, uh, he wanted to ask you something, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Far away, man. <laughs> well, so so you and I, had we, we had messaged earlier on Facebook, and I had asked you about DCS, and you said that there were no, no other interactions with uh, CPS or DCS except for Sebastian going missing, which I then told you, but that, that's not mandatory necessarily unless CPS was already involved. So now, you're not really you, being honest. Wait a minute. You asked me 
because I'll read the messages to everybody in God and country. You asked me if there was an active CPS case on Sebastian. That's what you asked. And I told you, yes, there was. Because the sheriff's department told us that they had to report it because he was missing. That's what you asked. Now, you also started to ask if there was another case. And there was no other case that I know of that's active. That's what you asked. Josh? Yeah, I'm here. So, like I said, sir, I'm brash. I'm to the point. Be respectful. Can you hear and me? I will tell you, and I'll be honest, I'm going to tell you the truth. I got nothing to hide. Can, did, you, did you hear what I said? Yeah, he said, okay. Can you hear him, Josh? I can hear him, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I can hear you now. Go ahead. I just said, well, in the messages that I asked that it was pertaining to Sebastian's uh, school, right? Like you just said. And you said, no, other than him going missing, no CPS cases. I don't know. I don't, I can't hear. Uh, maybe that he didn't say anything. Can you hear him, Chris? Can you hear Hello? him? Okay. Yeah, I can now. I can now. Okay. Sorry. So you didn't ask, you asked about active cases. That's what you asked about. And I answered mm. your question. You did. You answered my question. Hello. Hello. He said you answered his question. I can hear you. Can you hear him, Josh? Okay. Yeah, I can't hear him. <laughs> okay. Can y'all? So, I think so he, he's actually he's asked me, and I can't pull it up because if I pull it up, then we lose contact. But he asked me if there was active DCH CPS, whatever you want to call it, case with Sebastian. And I said, yes, he's missing. I was told by the sheriff's department that they had to report it. So, yes, there's an active case. Is there anything other than that? No, there's not an active case. So my, my statement that I told you is true. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I, I get it, the active investigation or but yeah you, you but you did really maybe it's just because of text but you did make it seem like there was there was no like that that this was the first time that that they'd ever been involved at all no i i didn't insinuate now understand something words on paper are simply words on paper whatever okay. emotions you put behind them is directly a, a proportionate to yourself not me oh, sir i didn't i didn't put any emotion behind it i'm just well saying. what you're saying you're trying to insinuate on this show no Nope. Yes, you did, sir. Yes, because not, you just I'm, stated, you just stated, you just stated that you yes. said that I made it sound like this. No, I didn't. I told you, I gave you a direct statement, gave you your answer, and that that right there is the what exactly what I'm talking about. Then you called into the show and you said, no, you're lying. No, I'm not lying. So call a spade a spade, but make sure you're right. Now, to be honest with you. It has nothing to do with finding my son. You don't so, think that D, you don't think okay. All right. Well, look, man. How does DC how does CPS have to do with anything finding Sebastian? Because if if you're insinuating something, well, you said they opened up an it. investigation. You said they opened up an investigation. So you tell me what it has to do with him. Because what did I tell you? That's what you're not listening. The sheriff's department told us that they are required to report it to DCS, CPS, whatever you want to call them, they are required to report it to them. Mm -hmm. That answer has yet to change. It hasn't changed any of the slightest. And, and okay, so that's the, okay, I get it. So it's the only Thank open you. investigation. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm.
What's the next hard one we got? Far away. Okay. I'm not arguing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was just wondering, like, if him, like, Katie, let me ask you this, or anybody, anybody can answer. So, like, if he, if y'all were at home alone, like, because Chris works out of town a lot, um, and this is, I just wonder, like, would would Sebastian know what to do if there was a house fire? Like, if it was just you and him, does he know how to handle all that kind of emergency stuff? We have gone over it with him several times. Um, talked about, like, what to do in case of an emergency, calling 911, um, running to a neighbor's house to ask for help, um, you know, known friendly neighbors. Um how to get out, you know, if, if a door is blocked and that type of thing. So yes, he should, um, assuming that he, you know, can, is able to think in, in a, um, sorry, I'm losing my word, like in a panic, like if there's an emergency happening. Um, but yes, we have, we have safety plans that we've gone over as far as like getting out of the house in case of fire and, and how to, to, um, get a hold of someone in an emergency. Okay, so um, so if there was an emergency, would he run out of the house like that barefoot? Or would he throw on his slippers, do you think, because they're by the front door? Um, honestly, it could go either way. I know his dad said that he hasn't seen him go outside without shoes on since he was two. Um, but I, however, have had a different experience with Sebastian where he does go outside without his shoes on. Um there's been several times where he takes the trash out in his socks and I'm like, dude, you got to put shoes on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But um, I, I would say, honestly, it would just depend, I think, on the situation. Yeah. How do, so you have a padlock. Is that what you said earlier that you have a padlock on, the, you know, like I forget what they're called, but, you know, where you put the code in a code lock. A, yeah, not a padlock. I meant, yeah, I didn't mean a padlock. I'm sorry. The code where you put the code yeah, in. The, with the, yeah, with yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would he turn around if he left and actually put that code in? Do you have to put the code in to lock it back? He locks, it? Yeah, he locks the door beside, behind himself every time he goes out it. Okay. All right. I'm just trying to think. Is there anybody like any... Well, I mean, I don't know if y'all have housekeepers or what, like, is there anybody you don't, you could think of? And I know I'm sure you gave it to the police that might have had the combination that could have come in like while you were asleep that the dogs would not be alerted to or anything like that. The only people that would have access to my house have all been interviewed. Okay. Oh, uh, man. Um, I don't know. And not only that, but if somebody had been in the, by the front door, punched in the code, believe it or not, no, it's not super clear, but you would have seen a, a, a shadow or a figure. Yeah, that's what I would think. At, um, at, based on, you know, something would have been visible because um, one of the lights is still visible from that green camera from across the street. Yeah. That has been, like I said, Every video, and I've said this through Facebook, everything in the neighborhood, um, I can't, I couldn't tell, talk to you enough positive about my neighborhood because anybody had cameras voluntarily gave up hard drives, flash drives, access to uh, clouds for them. They've let people go in and search their houses multiple times without needing a warrant or a subpoena or anything. They've just openly done it so i mean it that's why it's so difficult right now yeah now they come out and uh and i know this is part of the investigation so you may not can answer this but they it, i mean it was public because we saw them we saw them with our own eyes so they come out about what 11 times counting the backyard where they took pictures okay so did they come in and check as well the 11 times or like uh did they do uh forensics like a luminol or anything like that no um no 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 i that i can answer no they they haven't done that we we actually katie and i sat down at our table um in our dining room and that's basically where everything conducts itself um 
we sat down with him in the, in the dining room and I asked him flat out, I was like, what about fingerprints? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. can, can we not take fingerprints? What, what can we do? Can we check this? Can we check that? And they said, no, because, and they explained why fingerprinting would not necessarily be where they would get a hit was ridges and things like that compromise the fingerprint. Yeah. And they, he goes, you know, despite TV and the movies, you know, that stuff you see is not necessarily true. I was like, okay, well, that's cool. I just, you know, they said, reach, think of anything. Well, we were thinking and asked them, how about this? And how about that? What about this? What about that? And we got shot down. <laughs> yeah. So um, is there or is there not a couch in front of the back door? No, there is a couch in front of a door. In front of a door. Uh, a door. Okay. I was just wondering, so, um, but so can he get out the back? Okay, so he can go Is there an the exit out the back of the house? Yes, that's unobscured from anything? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so, okay, but what I'm asking is, how how did you know that he went specifically out the front door? What made you think that? What made you think that? We presume that he left out the front door. We never, we never no 100 percent, obviously but we presume based off of process of elimination um going over it with law enforcement going over the house where things are how things are sebastian's routine um and the fact that that's the door that he always uses or prefers to use because i won't say 100 percent of the time he does come in with me through another door but um that's the door sebastian prominently uses that's the one that he if he were going to sneak out of the house or leave the house for whatever reason that's the most reasonable door that he would have left out of um, any of the others would have made noise or not been. or would not have been locked mm -hmm. so because the back door, so that the back door would not lock from the outside like the front no mm -mm. you'd have to have the key so we i can't we we one I, i'm not going to describe every door lock in our house I mean, I first. That's, that. that's a surf that's a safety thing yeah but, I that. don't do that um yeah but what i can say is the only there's only two doors in the house that he could have gone out where he could have locked from the on his own or from the outside. And the one he wouldn't have gone out because of how much noise it makes. Yeah. Everybody would have, plus it would have been seen on camera. Let's put it that way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that it yeah. would have been seen on camera. So by suspicion or reasonable elimination of all these doors, it's front door. Okay. And there's no, and so, and there was no windows unlocked or anything like that, that y'all can tell or could tell. I'm sure they looked at all that. Yeah. With yes, the screens yes. intact and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, nothing exterior of the building of our house has been altered. Yeah. You know I mean, and then that's why it was like, oh, huh? not only that, but for him to go out the window so to speak he would have landed in the flower bed and it, you know barefooted yeah we'd have heard something because he had landed on it and screamed <laughs> yeah 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 all right let me okay so let me ask let me get these people i know i'm in they're they're itching for some hard That's questions cool. and i've been um all right so uh let's see i know that that girl has been wanting to ask like what he had on i don't think katie heard me a while ago but um like when y'all were out to eat sunday um um like what he had on uh that day like when he went out to eat his tennis, let's go ahead his, his tennis shoes jeans and a black t-shirt with um grogu on the front okay and so but so and then he changed before he went to bed into the black the black sweatpants with the white stripes down the side and a long sleeve black shirt okay and that i yes. think was originally listed on the missing poster as a sweatshirt 
and everybody mistaken it for a hoodie. And even Seth said himself that we both were trying to get that corrected because it was because yep. when it, when they said sweatshirt, everybody assumed it meant hoodie, not long sleeve black shirt. Mm -hmm. And, and and I because uh, and I'll have to say because it did not have stripes on it. It was black sweatpants. It mm -hmm. did not say the white stripes on it. So that was a big one for me. That for me that was a huge. Mm -hmm. And then another thing, they're not sweatpants. So some of these young cats out there probably don't understand where I'm fixing to go with this. Black but us older folks, um, go back and think of the 1980s Adidas pants. Where you mm -hmm. had the white stripes down the side, almost like in a, a tearaway style pants. Yeah. That is what the pants were. They weren't sweatpants. I know what you're talking about. Is that? <laughs> that that's why I'm like, older folks will know. These younger kids, I don't know if they'll know or not. Yeah, I know it's. Exactly. I just call them sweatpants, but. Well, that's a, there's a difference. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Uh, well, let me get some of their questions, and then I'll ask you a really hard. I think it's a hard question. Okay. I might you on the spot but nah you're fine okay all right let's ask theirs first because i don't want you to go oh, i'm over here <laughs> no so, no i i gave you my word and i told you i'm i'll well, stick to my word yeah, can i ask then i'll ask you now before i go to theirs before i forget yes ma'am <laughs> yes, ma go ahead what in the world is this on your arm on day eight the interview it's a scratch or a bite mark left left arm or right arm oh i don't know it's it's the one where you were in the green shirt um and i think it's the i think it was the right i think it was the right arm so right arm slightly above the elbow if i if, uh, or if I think i'm it was, guessing i think it was right below if i'm not mistaken so i have a i've got two spots on one on my hand and i got um, one on my closer to my elbow there are two spots uh-huh we have little morkies and we have one that's very playful we have one that's not so playful and i like to rough house with my little morkies and i put my hand down and they chase it around and i don't stop and i let them nibble and i've been dumb enough and i've gotten scratched by the bigger one they got so, their claws clipped and not grinded so they're rough right now yeah, but I thought you hadn't been home for almost a month or, you know, all month. I thought they it looked like fresh scratch. I'm just so saying. So when I'm when I'm in a when I'm in a green shirt. Yeah. Okay. You were talking was to that, Fox seventeen. Okay, hey. Fox seventeen. I had already been home. So I got home February twenty sixth. That's oh, so that released because scratch. that's when I came home. Yeah, you're saying it was a new scratch then. Yes, ma'am okay yeah that, that's that's why i was like no i came home february 26th we did the interview and those were scratches that are fresh okay the day i came home i was actually still wearing my work clothes <laughs> okay so y'all that is a he's saying that is a fresh um scratch so i'll say it now i have also asked about that picture so that is a fresh after he got home from his little dogs and believe it or not, that is the first time I've heard that question. So thank you. I, I had not heard that before. Yeah. So I did. I asked that. So if you see that picture out again that I asked, that's just from where I asked it, I believe, today. And I asked and it I yesterday. And I believe I was wearing like, uh, it's like a mint colored button up shirt, I think. You were. Yep. There you go. Yep. Absolutely. So that's where that come from. I, I knew I was going to stump you with one question. <laughs> <laughs> pretty close i was like wait oh yeah you thought they all been asked didn't you <laughs> yeah just about i mean i i've told everybody on facebook and i you know i said look you know everybody's been nasty and all this and like look i got no problem i'll answer your questions just fire them away but and i have asked like keep in mind there's like three of us and thousands of y'all so we're trying to get to them but yeah so uh uh so let's see you made a good one. Uh, I'm going to try to find a great one. <laughs> did, did you ever use a belt on him? Have I ever used a belt on Sebastian? Yes. Okay. Outside of his clothes, on his buttocks. Okay. 
uh, police call DV when Sebastian home. Okay, have you ever had uh, domestic violence called on you when when Sebastian was there? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, I actually don't have any domestic violence in my history, period. Okay. He says he's never had domestic violence, y'all. Um, okay. Now, here's one. Let's see. Hi, Bill Hornady. Let's see. Okay. With Sebastian's autism, does he have a violent outburst? If so, what typically triggers the outburst? <laughs> I wish I could show y'all this in person. <laughs> All right. Does he have... When he was younger, he probably had some pretty nasty ones. As he's gotten older, between his mama, me, and his dad, and other family members, trying to get him to, like, look, you need to focus on this. Stop doing He Ball your fist up. Put him down to your side, like, in a very aggressive manner, like you're pushing down, and stomp with one foot. Okay, mm -hmm. he gets like that when he's throwing his tincture tantrums, and then he brings his hands up in like the military knife knife hand is what they call it. All four fingers and thumbs pointing outward. Yeah, and he's like moving his hands up and down, kind of like he's making a point. Kind of <laughs> that's to the extent of his violent outbreak. But other than that, no. Yeah. All right. Justin said he wants to understand this. He said, in my understanding this, you hit him with a belt because he didn't have a belt. No. No. Okay. No. No, 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 no. So the question about hitting him on the outside of his clothes, on his butt with a belt, that was something that he got in trouble for because he lied to us and he got one lick. Okay. Um... Let's see. Mm. How is it possible, do you think, that Katie, and, and I'm just asking now, you no, probably, how, how do you think it's possible that Katie and Sebastian, or, and Katie, and I can ask you too, you got a voice. Can I ask you why Chris is always speaking for you? I'm just wondering. <laughs> why is Chris always speaking for Fire you? Fire away, babe. Go ahead. If you're not there, if you're not there, Chris, hi, hold on. If you're not there, people want to know this. If you're not there, how can you answer all the questions? <laughs> so, if you notice, there's certain questions that you're asking. I'm not saying anything about. I know. So, as soon as you start talking about Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So I don't say nothing. Saturday, I don't say nothing. But anything after that from... The six from midnight to six. Okay. Being on the phone with her prior to. Yeah, yeah. I can I can answer those questions. Okay. And just so <clears throat> I've told somebody this before. My wife has popped off to somebody on Facebook about it. As nasty as some folks have been, my job as a husband is to protect my wife, my kids at all costs. And I will stand in front of them, beside them, wherever they want to be, and I take all the hard hits. I'm tired of people dragging her through the mud. I'm tired of seeing the stuff that they say about her. Say it to me. I'm okay with it. Say it to me. Leave them alone. Be nice. Be respectful. Be courteous and think about a woman whose heart's broken because her son is missing. If everybody would just take a step back for one second, go look at your kids and realize you got a kid, your kids at your house right now that you can walk up to. They may be in the bed sleeping, but you can walk up to them, give them big old hugs and kisses, tell them good night and enjoy the moments. Right now, there's three parents in this world, well, more than three, but right now for this situation, there's three parents that cannot do that. So forgive me for standing up and being my wife's rock and foundation because that's what a marriage is. That's my job. Okay. Um, hmm. But we do love all of y'all. doesn't matter. We still love you. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, Babe, if you want to answer, answer. Go for it. Uh, no, I... I don't understand why it's a problem that my husband helps talk. I mean, I get that y'all want to hear my voice more, but honestly, half the time it's because I'm crying or I'm... Honestly, I don't have words to explain what I am anymore. Uh, it's okay. I just, you know, I just wondered. A lot of people was asking that. I'm sorry, I was trying to read some mm -hmm. of this. A lot of people was asking that. And, um, you know, just might as well ask it. Um, no, and, and we appreciate it. Never wrong. We said, thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right, y'all. Let's see. Oh, did y'all, uh, what did y'all like to do together as a family when um, Chris was in town and y'all were all together? Like, what was your thing? Did you ever, like, have a short mini vacation on the weekends? Did you go, I mean, what did you like to do? Oh, we do all sorts of stuff. Um, he loves top golf, so we like to take him there. Mm -hmm. um, he... Dave and Buster's because games. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got a few really good parks in the area that he still enjoys going and playing in. Um, hiking. We do hiking. We go balling. Um, we have in the summer a family member with a pool, so he absolutely, utterly loves going over there. And, um, we do game nights. He loves playing cards. Um, Uno is currently his favorite game. Could he swim? Like, like a fish. A fish. <laughs> <laughs> what was his favorite food? Uh, well, that depends, depends on, what on day. which day of the week. <laughs> uh, what day of the week? <laughs> yeah. He changes his favorite food probably every day. Chocolate um, milk has been a long time runner. Tofu, believe it or not, tofu. He's not. not he, he's not a huge steak eater, but not steamed fried, tofu. Not mm. fried and no sauce, just plain steamed tofu and sushi. The boy loves. Oh yeah. sushi. Yep. He loves it. Um. Did he like going to, did y'all ever take him to the Japanese places where they made that? Show guns where they cook in front of you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he yeah. likes it, but it's, he, he doesn't at the same time because it's so loud and clanky. Yeah. And, and so they use a lot like, of the, the, the teriyaki style sauce. Yeah. We, when we get his, we kind of have to ask, like, hey, can y'all scoot some over? He doesn't, he doesn't like condiments that much. He really doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chris, what time did you get home on Monday? Do you, do you remember? Um, I want to say it was, well, hold on. Let's see here. One something. One something, I think. Yeah. And then did you have to go back up there and get your camper? I mean, um, is that what you had to Y'all had to go back and get that. Somebody had to drive yes. it back. Or... No, no, no. It, it's a fifth wheel. It's a fifth, a fifth wheel. wheel. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't. I couldn't tell. Somebody was just. No, no, no. You know. So, so there's a couple things that because of this whole situation, I hope families never endure. Right. Um. Without going into great details, I almost lost my job. Mm -hmm. Um, over this? Yes, over this, very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I was like, well, so I got permission. And I, and I say I got permission. I asked law enforcement, said, hey, I need to go down, go get my fifth wheel, and I need to bring it home. Mm -hmm. Because right now, you know, and they said, Okay, so we told them what day we were going, and we went down there. We weren't even down there, I don't know, 24 hours maybe? I think we were down there 
maybe 17 hours long enough to get down and I finished packing everything up and I'll say we I she didn't go I was down there long enough to pack everything up I spent the night in my trailer hooked up the next morning and came home mm-hmm. so but will you be going back to work there I mean they'll allow you to go back to work there uh, I mean in Memphis things have worked out I, I will be returning to work Good. Okay. All right. Good. Um, so why the three-way call? So, well, because I'll give I you. Because was I'll, hysterical yeah, okay. and screaming and crying and frantic. And so he told me to mute my phone and he's the one that actually called because at that point I couldn't even make words anymore. So not only that, but if uh, folks know the area, when you call 911, you go to a central dispatching unit. You don't actually go to your local PD unit. You go to a hub on a cell phone. When you tell them where you're at, then they redirect you to the local PD. We don't live inside city limits, so the local PD is, they're not responding. It's not their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So we have to call the sheriff's office. So I called directly to the sheriff's office because it, I know what was going to happen, bypass it, call them. And then within 10 minutes of that phone call, they were at the house. And when they were at the house, they were at the house in full force. How many came? Do y'all remember? Was it a lot? Or? Have you, you've seen... You've seen the aerial shot of the subdivision, correct? Yes. Okay, so from our house, go all the way that, back down to Stafford to that stop sign where Kellen and Stafford meet. Then line cop cars all the way down Kellen out to Long Hollow Road. Yeah. That's how many cops came. <laughs> well, um, is, there, is there a reason like y'all didn't go to the vigil? I mean, for real, the one by the high school? Seriously? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma why? So security reasons. And here's, so this is what I'm fixing to tell you is going to spark a whole bunch of stuff in the comments. I'm not afraid to answer any of this. The young lady who started to organize this vigil never even contacted us. Not one time has any of these vigils taken place as somebody tried to organize them with us as the parents. I think the only one that's been somewhat organized with a parent is the one that was done in Clarksville with Seth. Other than that, the one that was down that was supposed to be out in front of my house was a security issue. My neighborhood said, we don't want it here because our roads don't have sidewalks. We don't have easements. Technically, you're not even supposed to park on the street. Yeah. We found out about it, and then we found out that they were spreading it all over basically the county and state, and there was, like, tons and tons of people saying they were going to come. And um, there, there's there's zero parking here. There's It's not big gathering yeah. spot. So we asked for them to move it to the school, which is literally, like, half a mile from my house, if that. It's not, it's not even that. And, it's, like, a quarter mile can down accommodate. The can accommodate all of the people. Not yeah. only that, but some of the people, like some of the comments and the stuff that's being said. And I know. If I'm you're in our shoes, now, it, it, could be a, it, should, it could be a security reason because if somebody shows up acting crazy, you know, that that's, that's not kosher. One, it's not coming in our subdivision. I don't want it in front of my house. I don't need thousands of people in front of my house. You know, I appreciate it. You're still talking, but I can't hear you. I can see you're talking if you did if you moved. All right, we'll listen for him. Uh let's see. Um Katie, was you um still married to Seth when you and Chris met? No. So, um, 
I know he's insinuating that I cheated and I did not. Um, Seth and I had been separated for, I think, about two years and change when I met Christopher. Yeah. And we didn't get married until nearly three years after my divorce. So, no, I was not cheating and running around. Um, you know that it's been said <laughs> that there are rumors, and Chris is not up here now, but it's been said that um, there is someone in the neighborhood that you have been seeing. Is that any truth to that? No. Okay. Um, and there was nobody else in the house that night with you? Just me and my son. Can you tell me more about that three-hour phone call? I mean, is that normal, something normal that y'all did every night? Or? So, my husband works out of town, as y'all all know. And, yes, it is regular that we talk every evening or during all throughout the day we call each other here and there we chat off and on that's how we're involved and we're our version of spending time with each other because you know on a different situation where you know both people come home from work at a normal time you sit down you have dinner you you spend time with your spouse and you know it, it's hours of time that you're spending with them we don't have that physically when we're separated by work so um, we spend it on the phone, you know, we talk while we're having dinner and, you know, we, most of the time the phone's on speaker and Sebastian talks to him and whatnot, but that's the way that we are still spending time and talking about our day. And yeah, I just, I mean, if it's, you know, every night, I mean, that would kind of <laughs> get boring to me. I mean, everybody's different, but I just wondered if it was something normal, you know, that y'all did, or it was just that one night, you know, or a couple of nights before or anything like that. I, I didn't know if it was normal. I didn't, I wouldn't, I mean, it's not something I would do. So, I mean, I'm not saying y'all don't, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, mine goes, just go. Well, and then that's normal for some people. Not everybody wants to, you know, spend that much time with their spouse, but I, enjoy being around my spouse and not my husband and you know and and i enjoy that he's a part of my life and a yeah. part of you know the family and and for for us that is our normal albeit some other people you know may not yeah the same way you know not everybody wants to be around somebody all the time but sometimes you know just being but on the phone you're just kind of sort of spending time together but is that not, and, and, and I think this is a fair question, I'm not trying to be mean, but is that not, and this has nothing to do with Sebastian being gone, but, you know, but it, but it kind of does. I, I'm just weird like this. So, but, but is that not taking time away from your son that you could be spending with your son? No. Being on the phone? No, because I'm not on the phone during all of that time. I'm not on the phone every minute of the day with him. I'm on the phone in the evenings after bedtime until I go to sleep, that type of thing. I spend time with my son from the time I get home until the time he goes to bed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess. I just, I don't know. That's just kind of not something that, um... I don't know. A lot of people just find weird. and Well, and, and a lot of people don't have long distance marriages either. So I'm sure they could. But if they were in this situation, then, you know, maybe they would have a different opinion or point of view. But, you know, I don't think it's weird to spend time with your spouse on a regular basis. Yeah. And what about, and Chris, do you, um, like, are you, work, you're off nights or do you work, did you, do you mind telling, do you work night shift or is it days or... I mean, do you mind? Is that okay to ask? Or yeah, no, that's fine to ask. So, uh, in my line of work, you really don't have, I would say, a normal set schedule. Um, I'm going to give you an example. So, helping a guy out right now till I go back, I'm filling in for a guy. His shift yeah. starts at noon and doesn't get off until midnight tonight. Yeah, that's not your normal shift, you know. So it kind of depends. Um, some 
some crane operators depends what what's going on on the job site determines on like the hours because if you're pouring you're doing a concrete pour um you I mean you may you may be up there for 18 24 hours mm-hmm. i mean it and just for the record because a whole bunch of people just snap back at me because i did say that i talked to the, my husband on the phone when i eat dinner and i do and i also said not every single day most of the time we talk from bedtime until i go to bed or or one of us falls asleep but I also said that he interacts with Sebastian as well because he does. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For some reason, my chat is not moving and I'm having to stroll it. That's why I keep doing that. I don't know oh, why. Uh, and I don't know how far behind y'all I am, uh, chat. I don't I don't know how far this is behind, but I'm sorry. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I, I'm kind of scared to refresh it because I don't want to lose nobody. Um, let me let me try to refresh it. Y'all don't go anywhere. I'm sorry. I okay, apologize. Sure. Let's see if it reloads. I got myself to the stage and I think who is Katie up here? Yeah. Or Chris? I got one of them's up here, but I can't tell. I think it's Katie. <laughs> Katie, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm going to put this back down here for Chris again. Yeah, I had to reload because my, it wasn't going anywhere. I was having to do that. That's why I couldn't catch none of the questions. Oh, I was so behind y'all. I apologize. Okay. Was Chris in Memphis the entire weekend? Okay, here we go, guys. Was he in Memphis the entire weekend or did he leave? I think he already answered that one. He said he was there the entire weekend. And then they want to know, did he take a polygraph test and pass? And, uh, oh, okay. So, mate, you can answer this one, Katie. Why did Sebastian wear pull-ups at your house? So Sebastian wore pull-ups because, or when specifically, when he was having his regression, when he was having issues with um, wet in the bed or wet in his pants. He had issues where he would wet himself at school um, and then occasionally would wet himself at night. Um, now, I know that, that Seth went and said that that never happened at his house, but I do know that it did um, of at least a few occasions that I know of. Um, but that's not the point. The point is, is that he did go in and out of pull-ups based on when he needed them. So if he was during a regression um, phase, um, he would go into the pull-ups. And then once he, you know, got back on track and he was not having um, wedding issues at school and or home, um, he would go back into, you know, regular underwear. Um, and that, unfortunately, is just something that has been happening for you know ever um right. sebastian was late to potty train and has had issues going back and forth with it basically his whole life right um uh it's okay so why is there a problem i feel um i mean i feel it shouldn't be a problem but somebody's asking about the gofundme why are you so mad about that chris so Initially, I forgot what day it was. Myself, Katie, and Seth were in my house, and I had brought up the question. I said, "Hey, and, you know, should we start a GoFundMe page to start trying to raise money to uh, add help to this, however we can?" And the police said, "Hey, no, I don't recommend doing that because then if you do that, it looks like you're trying to do this for profit." And I was like, "Okay, that makes sense." So we all three had an agreement. We weren't doing this. And next thing you know, now there's the GoFundMe page up there. So, okay. And, um, but, okay. So why don't y'all just start your own GoFundMe page? I mean, it's like, 
there's no sense in arguing over it, really. I mean, it, well, and it, so all of this has kind of stemmed because you got a family member who wants to go out there and blast some family matters to the public. That's where it all stems from. Like I said, this is not family problems. This isn't about family matters being public. It's about Sebastian. Right. And we've got some family members that aren't necessarily kosher about everything right now. And they're upset. Their emotions are, I got it. Everybody's been at one point hot headed, you know, in, in some, if somebody tells me they're not, that's a lie. Everybody's been a hot head at some point. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we got a missing yeah. kid and that's a problem. Well, in my opinion, I mean, you have to put everything aside. I mean, your feelings, her feelings, and I know it's not easy. You've got, you know, you you honestly have to do this. You're going to have to endure a lot. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not going to be pretty, and it's probably going to be worse. I just sat here with another case, two and a half years, uh, going th going on three years in June. And the things I've seen out of that has not been pretty. And no results have been, unfortunately, found. And, um, but I, I'm hoping that it will be different with Sebastian. I know that the people there care. There's no doubt in my mind. And one reason that there's no doubt is again that's where i was born and raised and i have family there and i know and there's good people there there are good people there and you know i, I see the difference i really do and you know sometimes this internet is harsh but one thing that i see different with the police there is they do come out and they say, we, we do want your help. We do want, you know, and they're in, and, and they're asking and they're begging and they're doing everything they can to find Sebastian. And they're trying to put him first. You know, it's not hard when you have others that have come up missing during this um, search for Sebastian. Um, you know, because everybody deserves a fair shot, you know, Raleigh, um, everybody deserves a fair shot to get found. Um, and I know that's breaking everybody's heart, you know, your hearts, everybody's hearts that this had to be scaled back a little bit. But you can't give up. We can't give up. You know, and sometimes... You're going to go to bed crying. You're going to go to bed, you know, no matter what people think of you, it does not matter. You're going to hear things. You're going to see things. But again, the most important thing is Sebastian, because no matter what, no matter if he's out there, well, good, fine or not, he deserves to be found like anybody else. He is somebody you know, and he's your somebody and he's Seth somebody. And like Seth said, damn it, bring him back. Katie, I know you've been asked this a hundred times more probably today after rethinking everything to this day. If he could hear you right now, what would you say to him? Or, and if somebody had him, what would you say to them? I would say to Sebastian that we love you, baby. Bubba, we're going to find you. We're going to bring you home. And I would say to somebody that has my son, that they better let him go and they better come out because we're going to come and we're going to find him. We're not going to stop and we're going to bring an army with us. An army of support of people that are helping to look and um, uh, 
son, I love you. Katie, if you could take anything back about that day, about Sunday, about Sunday, and redo anything about Sunday, what would it be? I'd have slept outside that boy's door. <laughs> um, I, say, I say it like that, and I promise I'm not laughing. I just... Um, I, I would have, I would have, I don't know. I would have made sure to check him a hundred times. You know, they get older and you think that they're okay and that they're, they're good. And, and you don't check as, as much throughout the night. Like when you get up, you know, when he was little, if I woke up, I'd check on him. You know, I was always looking at him. And as he got older and he didn't need that as much anymore. And I took that for granted. Yeah, there's a lot of things we take for granted and we don't realize things can change in the blink of an eye, but they can. I'd give anything to be able to hug my baby again. We don't realize how time, we just can't turn back time. That's one thing we cannot undo. Let me look on here. Um... They, uh, okay, so they want to know, on the Super Chats, they want to know, explain to me why you keep making comments about what people think of you, Prius. Why not focus on searching for Sebastian? Well, I do focus on looking for Sebastian. But at the same time, when I said I'd answer questions and people want to put questions up there and then you want to put your comments and your two cents in with a question... You're going to get an answer. Somebody asked me to <laughs> remember these and I always forget them because I'm not used to them. Um, well, I'll just go down these real fast. I apologize. No, you're fine. Um, so you spoke about discipline. What kind of discipline did mm -hmm. he want? He as they said you spoke about discipline. What kind of discipline did he want to get away from the house? Because of that, did he want to get away? Oh, okay, so they want to know: Did he want to get away from the house because of the discipline? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. So, Sebastian is not afraid. He runs up to me, he gives me a big old hug, says, "I love you." Says, "I miss you." When I'm out of town, he, his mom he'll, he'll look at his mom and say, "Hey, when's Mr. Chris coming home? Uh, can we call him?" Things like that. Yeah. I mean, discipline is discipline. There's a difference in discipline a child and, and, and beyond discipline a child. Right. You know, I can tell you from personal experience, I know the difference between both. And I vowed I would never in my life do that to a child. Um, they want to know, okay, so he's already answered that one. He's looked for, they've put out flyers, and he's told a while ago that the the signs that you see in the yard, he said that um, that come from his family. Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, if people are interested in purchasing them or trying to get some ordered and sent to them, uh, find me on Facebook, send me your, con or like, just hit me up, and I will send you the point of contact. And you guys can reach out to him and work it out. In fact, actually, um, yeah, I, I would like to get that information and I will um, get with you to get that for about the okay. signs or whatever. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I'm just going down. Uh, okay, y'all, be nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, everybody's now, entitled to their opinions and, and their feelings. Don't get me wrong. Now I'm flipping down it and I'm like, well, hold on because I can't see them because I didn't catch them right when they first come up. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, y'all. Be not. I had to read some of these because once they're gone, I am not going to see them for a while. Oh, okay. I'm here. That's why I apologize. Uh, is it hurtful 
to be no because it's hurtful to be a bio say step oh that's when we first come on here and i was asking you that okay did he take any medicine before bed and did he sleepwalk did, yeah I did he sleepwalk? Have anything that, yeah i don't i as long as i've been in sebastian's life he i've never heard of him sleepwalk now getting up in the middle of the night and sneaking snacks and stuff that's one thing but Sleepwalking, and to clarify, not. he's not sneaking food because we starve him, because that's absolutely not the case. He just likes to munch on a bunch of junk food in the middle of the night because he doesn't get a bunch of sugar. He's, you know, one dessert, and he wants to eat the whole box, so he gets up in the middle of the night and sneaks snacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's in his room and hides the wrappers under his bed. I mean, it same stuff basic kids do. It's just... One, I'm not going to have bugs throughout the house. We told him, you eat in the kitchen, you eat in the dining room. And when you're done with it, you put it in the trash. That's the only thing we've asked him. <laughs> okay, so they're back to Rachel. So they're saying that what happened to her head, that's what they want to know. And what happened to that's her what head? Yeah, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, if they could clarify a little bit more, I don't, I don't know. They're saying you almost killed her? I don't know. Huh? Like I said, I don't know anything about Rachel. Okay. Um, it's posted on the board. Uh, uh, yeah, if they'll, I can't see the comments for some reason. It's okay. Me the it comments, says you but... got killed, Rachel. There was blood everywhere. Where, sir, you thought she was dead? I don't blood know. Where thought I would... No. Okay. Uh, that's news to me, but no. Um... It could be. Uh, they're paying. They paid to ask that question, which I'm just now getting to, and they've asked it two or three times. That's why uh, I can't. I don't know. It could be a troll. I don't know. I listen. I have no idea. I don't mean to make y'all feel. No, 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 no. I'm not. I just I'm sitting. There, I'm like inches. Like her head, blood everywhere. Uh, uh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a new one on me. So I Paul. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't really know what's going on there. Again, my, was, my uh, mother actually still talks to Rachel. I mean, that, that that right there ought to tell you the kind of relationship that my family had with her. We we still talk to her. Yeah. She's got her two kids. So where that all that stuff's coming from is very interesting. I but no. <laughs> well, there y'all have it, folks. Sometimes sometimes families do still talk to exes and their moms and dads and all that does. So I don't know. Um, did L E check vehicles or and your trailer that they that you took to memphis you, yes ma'am okay so yes, that they're saying yes all right let's see um oh thank you for coming a youtube member beautiful sunflower <laughs> yep uh the medicine that sebastian is that life-threatening if he don't take that medicine no Okay, it's not it's not life threatening, but it's not good that he don't have it, you know. Right. Yeah, and like anything else, it's not good because if you're ta if you take medicine for so long and you just come off of medicine just quick, fast, and in a hurry, it can cause seizures, you know. Yes. Yeah, it was supposed to be weaned off if and when he did, came off of it. It was not supposed to be a sudden stop. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your theory, each one of you separately, on what happened to Sebastian? Well, I mean, just like, I know you've probably had two or three, but like, what do you think now? We're three weeks later. What is your thoughts now? Like, what do you think? I wish I had a freaking clue on where my son was, to be honest with you. None of it makes sense. But... Not so much where he was, but like, if you just play it back in your head, like, if you think, what in the world happened? I mean, what could have happened? Is there things like maybe that you've thought over and over as a mother, what could have happened? Something ring a bell from a week ago, a month ago, something that's clicked to you. I mean, anything. Uh I mean, all I can say is everything that I've come up with, um, I've, I've 
asked law enforcement to look into, and so far nothing has led to anything substantial in finding him. I mean, we've we've gone over wild probabilities, you know. Hey, we got a lifelike bird in bound. And, um... Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. They never said nothing about it on the radio. We... It's important. I haven't been able to figure out anything that explains where my son is. Yeah. And they want to know, do you know this Katie Fisher, or Carrie Fisher, uh, personally, the one that um, redirected the search? No. Was convict you know who I'm talking about? She was a convicted felon. Yes, I heard I about that, but no, I've never met her before. How do you feel about her at all? How do you feel about that? Um, we talked to um, the law enforcement about it to ask because um, we didn't know anything about it until we started getting told that there was, you know, an issue and some and somebody with felon was potentially interrupting the searches and whatnot. And we went to them and and was like, "What the heck? Like, what is this? You know, what are y'all doing with it? You know, is this true?" And um, I don't know all of the results on if if law enforcement like directly addressed her or anything like that. I just know that um, um, that she led a search, I believe, down in Goodlitzville. Yeah. And at the end of the day, at least it was a search that happened. <clears throat> so you don't think she hurt? hurt anything or like as far as the searches or anything do you do you think it was just something that blew up on on um the internet i mean i mean i know they got her out she's not allowed to search anymore but i mean do you think it was something that just blew out of proportion i i i i mean it's nothing more than an opinion but i think probably because yeah. law enforcement said that um that there was no like hindrance that they know of that happened from that, but it's beyond the whole internet blow up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was just the question that was on here too. And, um, okay. So they want to know somebody, uh, always L eight wants to know why Sebastian was wearing pull-ups at your home. Uh, what, I think we cover that and not, uh, Oh no, they want to know, if he was afraid of Chris, is that why he was wearing the pull-ups? No, he wasn't wearing pull-ups because he was afraid of Chris. Sebastian had a recent autism diagnosis, but Sebastian has a chromosome deletion that he was diagnosed with when he was a baby. Yeah. So uh, that's what um, that's what they were saying, um, always L.A. Um Okay, so that's about Carrie Fisher. A couple people asked me that one, okay. Um, um, what are some of the signs or symptoms for Sebastian if he misses his medicine? Um, he's got uh, combined type ADHD, so he does get, you know, hyper. Um, his behaviors become a little more like he'll flip-flop between his moods more, you know, like being overly excited or, you know, um, he, he'll, he has periods where he's really calm, um, where he just hyper-focuses on, you know, whatever it is that he's playing or fidgeting with. Yeah. Um, he um, can become a little more temperamental, like eat more easily aggravated. Um, not that he becomes violent, but he just gets aggravated easier. Right. Um, he, he does get an increased appetite when he's off of his meds. You know, an unfortunate side effect of those is that they do suppress the appetite a little bit. Um, so he'll eat more. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, and he, he will be more, I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, like when he'll start telling you something, he'll be on a bunch of different subjects, but all like in the same sentence. He's right. so his, his thoughts he's become sporadic. less coordinated. Yeah, mm. he becomes a lot less coordinated in his thoughts. Yeah. 
Oh, so okay. So when he took, okay. So Katie, uh, the trash cans um, at the end of the driveway Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Was there any strange cars around the end? Uh, did the dogs and they want to know? Did the dog pick up that scent at the end of the driveway? Can, so, can I? Um, okay. okay. No, so I'd like to clarify this whole dog scent thing for once and for all. Mm -hmm. So the dog scent, everybody said, all oh, the dogs didn't get a scent. Dogs didn't get it. The dogs got a scent. Mm -hmm. What the dogs got and where it led to, there's a lot of misinformation as far as to the road, to the construction site, to this, to that, to this. Um, for the record, there were so many dogs used. I, I don't know if we actually have a true count. On the day one, there was five dogs automatically, we know for a fact. They brought dogs in from out of state, different counties, all over the place. Um, but of all the dogs, there was a couple that took them through a construction zone mm -hmm. and took them over to a retention pond. Uh -huh. Now, the retention pond is no, no higher than knee deep right they they walked it and they drained it but from there the scent disappears there's poof right right why did you lawyer up they said well i mean who's my lawyer i'd love to meet him <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be a smart ass, folks. Yeah, I don't know. You know I'm just I mean, <laughs> if somebody said we got a lawyer, I'd like to meet him because, uh, uh -huh. sure. Yeah, I, I, I have no clue. <laughs> I'm just reading the questions. Uh, so let's see. Uh, So somebody said, explain to me why you keep making comments about what people think of you, Chris. Why not focus on searching for Sebastian? I'm just reading. I'm just reading the questions. Uh, I can't see all of them until I pop them up. Unless I can see the very top. We'll see. Uh, okay, let's see with this. Three Tennessee families, each kid missing a child. Two of the three, at least one present on social media at least one parent on social media who is more concerned with how they begin being betrayed or treated so what about getting the word out about their child so i guess what they're saying is are you like who are you why are you worried about who gets the word out about your child i guess that's what they're asking that's the only thing that makes sense to me but i could be wrong like who does why does it matter who gets the word out about your child as long as it gets out oh did he drop down again whoops no he's still there you still there chris uh hello can you hear me now i don't okay. know what happened yeah i, I can uh, yeah like the uh the whole thing about i heard i heard your question my answer is simple we want correct information out there. We don't want false information, which unfortunately somebody has put out false information. And the downside is, is, I mean, it one anchor uh, in particular, I don't need to put the name out there. It's okay. But the, the one news anchor, instead of just reporting, you know, kept insinuating stuff which in itself is a problem um and it drew the focus away from sebastian and started focusing more on you know who did it who did it well these people are you know and, and that was a problem you know so we don't want false information none of the parents none of the family members want false information we just want the accurate information out there and people to focus on finding him instead of bashing parents or bashing something that they don't like you know and just if people would put that focus into finding sebastian instead of bashing us that that would be amazing we love we love you all regardless i don't 
I you understand know. that. But here, listen, I know, and y'all, let me get back to the comment. I'll get back to this in a minute. I think, uh oh, uh oh, Lord have mercy. Now I can't. Oh, there's my, oh, there's my comments. Sorry, y'all. I can't see my comments. I'll get back to all that. Thank you for all that. I'll get back to that in a minute. It's just too many, and I don't know how much further along it goes down. Um, but um, I just don't see what's the difference in that. And maybe, and we do want the correct. I said this from the day that I opened this up. I want to, I want to make sure the correct information, and I'll try my very best to do that, no matter what. And I could be wrong on some things. I really could. Uh, it, it's hard to get facts out about everything, and I'll correct if I'm wrong. But listen, um. And, and on this channel, I do say things that others won't say, and that's okay. But because I because I do care, and I'm passionate about the kids. I don't I don't care. I'm not in it for the money, the clicks, likes, views, whatever. I don't, I don't care. That's not what I'm here for. But Chris, it's what you said. So I, I'm asking you, why not go on these big channels or bigger channels? See, or little channels. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is. What does it matter? Is it is it that important to you that a person you feel and, and th your feelings are your feelings, but I'm just saying that you feel um, is getting this misinformation or this information about you or digging the dirt on you. Now, I'm just saying I'm not saying that's right or wrong. What I'm trying to say is or you go on this channel per se. He dropped off again. <laughs> Hold on. Paste it back up. Uh, Y'all must be, Y'all must have, are you having a Wi-Fi issues or storm or is that where he's at right now working? I think it's where he's at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said um, he wasn't, invited to nancy grace but i'm sure she would love to have them we've actually reached out to nancy grace and hadn't heard back we didn't know about the nancy grace interview yeah so uh yeah i think she would love to have it here he goes okay i think it would be great because she's got such a vast audience and a way of getting it out there big time absolutely absolutely but Chris, I was just going to say, what's the difference in that and being on a, 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 any channel that maybe is just trying to make a name for to their self? Is that not like, is that not, who's not really in, who's not really d does stuff like this? I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, is that not important to y'all? Find, finding some back is every bit of important as anything else but at the same time do i want to sit down with somebody who's drugged me through the mud continues to drag us through the mud and keeps putting false information out there which causes a lot of problems not just for us but for the law enforcement folks that are also doing their job trying to find sebastian it's an issue well, can I can I just ask you, yes, um, what about Nick Barris? I mean, the, he, that's who we're very, referring to. Okay, okay. Um, I I don't know anything about that, so I'm just gonna say okay, okay. Right, and unfortunately, and it, it's nothing. It's everybody out there. There's there's stuff that people don't know, and they're not gonna be. They won't know because they weren't per, pervy to the conversations. Yeah. You know, not only that, but. You know, the, it's, it just sucks. And I, you know, there's yeah. a difference in journalism and trying to get your Emmy nomination. There's a difference. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm, and I'm not, and like I said, I'm not trying to be mean, but. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, know. I'm just trying to figure this out. So, yeah. I mean, trust me. I, if I can go to everybody else and I can go get all these people and we can get Nancy Grace and we can get anybody else out there to spread the word, 
I'm not going to worry about one anchor. I'm not. Right. Well, I say everybody, you know, needs to do it. I mean, if, you know, everybody needs to do what they can, no matter if they're this big, this big, or this big, or gigantic, you know. But it, it's just, it is what it is. Um, it needs to be found. And that's, that's all there is to it. But Chris, I'm going to ask you, again, you know, a, a same thing I asked Katie a while ago. Um, if you could say anything in this world that you rethunk this three weeks, what would you say to Sebastian today, tonight, right now, again? I mean, it don't have to be the same thing. It could be now, what are you feeling tonight? I miss him. I want him home. Look forward to him being back home. I'm looking to see, happy to get things back to normal instead of chaos. Yeah. You know, I mean, it. I'm not a man of emotional words, but Sebastian, he knows. Deep down, he knows. Would, um, what would you do if you could change anything about that Sunday? And I know you were not home, but what would you do if you could change anything about that Sunday? I'll say that one more time. I'm sorry. I misunderstood that. <laughs> I, I, if you could turn back time and you could change anything about that Sunday, what would it be? I know you were not home. You were in Memphis. But if you could do anything over about that Sunday, what would you do? If I could go back and change anything, I wished I was able to work in town. Maybe things would have been different because we both would have been home. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, there's so many should have, could have, would have, and I wished I could have and wished I would have. And I, I don't have the answers because I don't know. I mean, I know I got, I got, my stepson's missing. My house is not whole. There's a big, big emptiness right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody said it took you seven hours to get home. Um, I don't know. It, it's a seven. It's a seven plus hour round trip from my house to Memphis. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. So they're saying that. Um, some people were saying that you like didn't leave right away and you were waiting and we already went through all that. So well, and, and, and some some of those folks' comment is correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I can't, I could not leave. I can't just, it, it's not a normal job. You, you can't, you can't just tell your boss, I'm out of here and walk out the door, get in your car and leave. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of safety involved, you know, uh, yeah. Sebastian said same, same thing. He's not going to be able to just be like, Hey, I'm out of here and walk out the door, you know? I left as soon as I could when I could. What um let's see. Somebody wants to know why you didn't want him around your daughter. Can, that can is a that is a personal family matter. Okay that unfortunately that's not one I'm going to open up. Okay. It, it's not a, it, well, okay. You don't have to, let me ask you this in another, another yeah. a way. Let me ask you this in my way, not their way. Um, I heard that it's possible. Uh, well, I heard that he, is he supposed to be a witness in, some kind of case that you have with your your wife is that true well, 
Okay. No, uh, ma'am. So I've I've heard that somebody said he was supposed to be a witness in my custody case with my daughter. Okay. <laughs> and absolutely not. Okay. Um, I, I don't know where that came from, but I mean, I, I, when I heard it, I was laughing internally. I just, I was like, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just kind of wondering how that would work, but yeah. Um, I, I just thought I would clear that up, but okay. So I, I won't keep y'all on here all night, but I want to ask you like, how, how did, um, there's co just a couple more. How would, um, how come Ellie do you think has a, publicly cleared you like in the public cleared you come out and said hey their parents are clear because i they know can't. what you've said chris right but why? they can't why because the investigation Protocol. is still ongoing because sebastian is still missing which is why they came out and clarified that no we are not suspects and yes we are um If, if if I mean, if you're not guilty, the first thing that they would do, just like with Elizabeth Smart, is come out and say he, you know, they're not guilty. Same thing with Brandy. I mean, Brandy Neal Monkey, uh, Michael Monkey Vaughn's mom. Um, I mean, I, that's what they're going to do. I mean, they're not going to, and others in the news. That's just who I think you're familiar with. Um, but that's what they're going to do. They're not going to like just allow you to be sitting there hanging in the public's eye and take all this criticism and stuff. I so because I here's there's so many agencies involved in this investigation. I agree. And I mean across the board. And and you think of an alphabet, it's probably involved. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time. I have begged and begged and begged, and so has my wife. Seth, when he was at the house before, same thing. We all asked, why can't you come out and just say it? Y'all told us to our faces. Mm -hmm. You know, it, and our the response we get, because it's an ongoing investigation, and protocol does not allow us to do that. And that mm -hmm. is the answer we're given. Mm -hmm. and i'm not saying you're i'm not saying you're telling a lie i'm just wondering why you know because i would be demanding <laughs> i really would be demanding <laughs> i'm just trying to think you know i would do everything in my power to you know and i'm not saying you're not i'm not saying i again my intro one of my intros has it on there i'm not saying you know, but you are suspicious or this is suspicious. However, I say it and I mean that. I mean, things don't add up. Stuff don't add up. I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff, but I'm not trying to be. Di I'm not trying to be disrespectful either. You know, I'm no, really I mean, not. this. So here's something that's very unique. Um, and I mean, we we talk about it whenever they come and they talk to us or they call us on the phone they this is a case that literally has got all of these agencies stumped okay and i and, and i'm saying this very openly as far as you know playing devil's advocate let's say one of us was suspected of foul play something let's say something right right there's no way that we would out dupe all these agencies there's no way however this 15 year old boy has managed to outdo everybody call him houdini he always wanted to be a ninja and we kept goof around well he he has officially done it because poof nothing you know and, and it's you know, the cops have told us this is a case that will go down as a researched study case where they're asking the questions and looking for answers and, and literally nothing. Everything they try to come up with, blank. Yeah. 
yeah, everything is just, <laughs> it's really strange. It's really strange. Uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, I wish, I wish there was something, anything. I do too. If I could get it, you know, out there somehow, I mean, from what I see, I don't, I don't know for a fact, there's uh, almost 1700 people in here. That's big for me because I don't ever have that. Uh, numbers don't matter to me, but in, in, somebody pointed out, stop saying that smiley because it matters when these kids are at risk. Yeah. I mean that it is, it's important when I'm talking about a child missing and, and this definitely means a lot that so many people are in here. They're in here because of you guys. Thank you. You guys need to be out here. In my opinion, speaking on him, not fighting with the Facebook groups. I see you in there. It makes me want to go in there because <laughs> sometimes you push the wrong buttons with me. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, and, and, and don't be wrong. And I, like I said, and I've opened that communication with you and I told you, you, you know, you yeah. want to talk, you call me, you want to send me a message, something. And I, as I've been very respectful to you, I haven't, you, have. you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I may not always say the right things. I may not. But it's that last time I looked in the mirror, I'm a human. I'm entitled to my my emotions. I'm entitled to my opinions. And I respect those. And I respect everybody else's just as much. Yes, sir. There, There's one thing that I... <sighs> Compassion is a virtue that is in very short demand in today's society. Because if you sit back and you look at all these families, now we got another one, Riley. You know, a six foot seven guy disappeared in the flat, gone. <laughs> now, now we got another family that's hurting. Yeah. You know, if you, as a person, ever set in the shoes that we, me, Katie, and Seth sit into this day, or the Riley family for that, for that much, I promise you the outlook that you're going to see from our view, you'll understand it. You'll be so riddled with emotions. And you really don't care because all you want is the same end result. You just want your loved one right right i know it don't get any easier each day that passes it don't they want to know if it's possible since y'all were on the phone if he could have walked to tried to walk to Chris's work that um thought maybe he was that close the building site the bill, you know, the construction site that was by your house. Maybe he thought that was Chris's job. Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. Sebastian. <laughs> no, Sebastian knows when my job sites, um, he knows what to look for. And the what I do site. Has, has no equipment of that manufacturer on that site period. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Katie. I'm sorry. The construction site near our house isn't like a skyscraper. It's just houses and homes. Yeah. Yeah, they're building a small subdivision. Yeah. Well, we've searched it several times. I mean, I'm, I'm currently sitting, you know, I mean, today's my last night covering this crane, but... I'm sitting at Vanderbilt University at the hospital, 300 feet in the air with a, with a skyline view. And I get to sit here and do what I do, but I also sit here and I watch life flight helicopters come in and land every so often at Vanderbilt and at the Children's Hospital. Yeah. And I have nothing but to sit here and wonder, could one of those be Sebastian? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Well, my prayers are certainly with every one of y'all. 
and um, Seth and um, Katie and you and the grandmother and everybody and Sebastian. I want everybody to um, the whole Hendersonville, the community, people that didn't know him, love him. And I'll, I want to see this come to an end in a good way. In a good way. Just to think positive, happy thoughts. Just think happy thoughts. Very, very true. And if y'all, anybody has any information, you know to call that number, 615-442-1865 or the 1-800-TBI-FIND. See, I got my, oh, I moved it, but the... Please print one of these out. Print it out. Pass it out everywhere. You never know. Again, like I asked you today, put it in your mail. Don't hurt if you mail a letter to somebody. It's your old friend. Mail it. Put, put it in there. Send it all over the world. Well, nope. I mean, it's funny you say that because we I, I've got confirmation that there's folks in Australia, Spain, England, Austria, UK. Uh, UK, that have they've got wind of this and they've got some posters posted. So it was actually kind of cool. I never thought that would happen, but that's pretty cool. Absolutely, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, funny face Brenda says love should have brought you home. Yeah, and. They were talking about um, he wanted friends. He's got more friends <laughs> than he will ever know what to do with. That's for sure. That's for sure. Well, I said it before. When he does come home, you know, and everybody complained to how how packed the block was with cop cars. Well, <laughs> he's now become like the son of Summer County. So, whew, it's going to be a long line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I sure hope it's soon. I sure hope it's soon. Was there anything that you would like to say that uh, either one of you that you think that we can do to help? I mean, that we can really do to help those near, those far. I don't know. I want to spread his face to the ends of the earth and back because he's out there somewhere and someone does know something and someone needs to come forward. Whoever may have him, assuming that someone might have him, needs to let him come home. And we need everybody everywhere to see his face and to know his face, all the missing children. But um, I personally think that the more people that know his face, the more likely it is that if he... If he is out somewhere, that more likely someone will actually recognize him and be able to call and we can bring him home. And we can do that. And we have these platforms. Um, will you, I mean, consider doing something for me, though. Will you please consider talking to some of the bigger creators and, and and it, it don't have to be like the news or, or whatever, but like, would you consider talking to some, especially, um, I know JLR again, Chris, I, I hope I got you calmed down on that a little bit. Um, uh, I'm, I'm calm. I mean, it, it, emotions can sometimes get the best of, per, of a person. I know, I know. And, and, and because I want the word, I personally want the word out. And what Katie just said about, that was perfect, what she just said. But if you will allow it yourself, and, and listen, listen, listen. If, if you ever have a question and you want to private ask me, look, is this person whatever. I've had my fair share with some of these people, okay? I'm not going to, I'm not, let me tell you, I'm not going to say but it's your ultimate decision. I would say, uh, I don't know. I'd watch that one because what I don't want 
I don't want these creators who's going to end up like Summer Wells case and then be fighting each other. I don't want that. Okay. I, this, this is about, this is about him. Okay. This is about him. But what I want well, you to consider is I want you to consider Chris and Katie to please right now, early on, go ahead and let's get his name and face out there and please consider talking. I mean, you got Jay for justice. You got, and she's sweet. I mean, let, let I mean, just let bigger channels, please talk to them. You know, the ones that's really for the kids, please. I'm just looked up because I'm nobody and you did make a promise to me. Trev time, Trev time is, uh, you know, I know you spoke with him already on another channel. I don't know how you feel about that, but he's, he really is for the kids. Well, you know? here's what I'll say about Trev and I'm going to, and I'm going to say this open and publicly. It's okay. So Trev sent me a message and he apologized. Mm -hmm. He apologized to me and my wife because he made a mistake. He got wrapped up in, I'm going to call it the sauce. He got wrapped up in that with jumping on the bandwagon of assuming and accusing us. Now, he went back and he has changed that. <clears throat> he has apologized. Mm -hmm. That, that right there alone, I'll do your show. Mm -hmm. Because you did it. You, you did what you were supposed to do as a man or a woman, excuse me. A new, yeah. new age thing nowadays. Sorry. Um, righteousness, the right thing, that will get you a lot farther than the rest of it. You know, I mean, it's it's one thing. And that's what I'm saying. JLR, this dude, he's going to have to make a public apology. He's going to have to make it public for me to consider him. And the reason why I say that is because how much crap he put out there and to the level he has gone to certain topics. There's one topic. Okay. My kids don't. Yeah. Don't cross that line. I, I don't care who you are. I understand. I'm just you saying. Know, I mean, and it don't one, even have one to of the. Well, one of the reasons it took us a little bit longer to do some of these interviews. Okay. And this is before we started doing interviews and talking with media, we were kind of advised, hold off, don't do that. Well, eventually got to the point we needed to start talking to the media. Mm -hmm. The parents, myself, Katie and Seth all decided we made a pack in the beginning. Hey, if we're going to do this, we're going to keep each other in the loop. We're going to talk to each other and ask. We're not just going to go out here and do our own thing. Okay. That has always been our pact. You know, we would call Seth and say, hey, initially he didn't want to do any type of interviews. And we understood that. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, hey, man, do you want to like phone in with us? Do you want to, you want to come to the house and we'll do this as a group? What do you want to do? We've tried and try and we want to do this as a group you know unfortunately you know somehow so long somewhere along the way we've all kind of gotten off track and he's kind of gone out and done his thing we've kind of done our thing uh mrs rogers done her thing i think his sister may have done something i mean but it's everybody's getting the word out mm -hmm. you know yeah I just don't want anybody's ego and nobody to get in the way. I mean, I'm just saying, because Katie did say it perfect just a minute ago. And if you can say it for the, for the, you know, for the flyers and stuff, I just want it to be known that because I always say, and no matter if it's a missing child, I always say it. Sometimes I do little things on um, just what's in my heart and stuff. Sometimes it could be on Freaking, I don't know. It could be, it had nothing to do with a person. Sometimes I just get into my feelings sometimes and come on here. And uh, it ends up, somebody says, you don't know what you did, did you? And it's just a lesson or something. I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head right now. But I always say, you know, no matter how little we are, 
we might take and say something and then somebody sees it and then they share it and it goes on and on and on and somebody really might be helped by it. Well, it's the same thing with Sebastian. Somebody might share it, come in two weeks from now or hopefully not that long, but, you know, and see him somewhere or remember something and something may click and, or it could be tomorrow, tonight, an hour from now. And it really may help, but sometimes you need other creators and it just needs to all just flow like that. I, I don't know, no matter how big or how small and it don't matter to me. I want to kind of promote everybody. If they have a channel and they're good and they have good intentions, I don't care who it is. I, I don't care what they do. And I just hope that y'all as the parents of him, don't let your ego get in the way. Just, just, let it roll off and, you know, do what you got to do. I, just bring him home. Bring him home. I just hope that makes sense. I it mean, I, I hope it's okay advice, and I hope I'm not overstepping saying that. Yeah. And yeah, right, Trev is a good guy. I'm glad he, I'm glad he did whatever, you know, he had to do. Well, he didn't have to do it. He just, he, he yeah. manned up and apologized because he made, he made a mistake and he said, look, I know I did. I'm apologizing. Appreciate that, man. It means that means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, all your viewers out there, I want to say thank everybody, regardless of what your personal opinion is of me, my wife, the situation, the, the bio father, anybody, it doesn't matter. I personally say thank you for being able to continue to spread the word, be a part of this, and in a, any form, shape, or fashion, um, and just know that you got three parents missing, missing a son that needs to be home, and compassion is, yeah. like I said, in short demand and could be overfloweth with people out there if we could just find a way to become all one united group and we can just do this yeah i agree you know i agree it's it's you know sometimes it's hard though something pops off or you hear this and you you gotta you know you gotta just do it and again like i told you when i first talked to you through there um i was just like we got to set our feelings aside. I mean, number one for me is you have to understand. I have to think of all sides and I have to mm -hmm. do until they say, and I think outside the box. I'm not like any of these other people. I'm not with them. I don't, I don't really, you know, there's a couple I might talk to here and there, but I don't work with nobody. Get that straight. Everybody while you're on my channel now, even these creators wonder, what do you do? Like, I don't, I don't work with nobody. If I want to know something, I'm pretty much going to go to you. If I'm going to call you out, I'll get on here and fire up live and I'll call you out. I'm not like these people, but don't put me with everybody else. You know, well, I mean, so, there, there's, but I have there's, my feelings too. And I think what I want and I say what I want. And sometimes it's not good. Well, there, there's, like I said, uh, there's information that we still, um, even as of today, we had a meeting with law enforcement and we've asked them verbatim, like everything we've been saying, is there anything you want us to change? Is there anything new that we can put out? And honestly, they, they said exactly what y'all been putting out, the way you've been putting out is exactly what you need to do. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. You know, and trust me, it kills us because they're so... <clears throat> There's facts that we could put out there and it would put a lot of things to rest, but we can't because of, they say it can potentially cause issues to the investigation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as somebody said, Smiley asked the hard question. I don't know what y'all want me to ask because that's what you better tell me before I get off of here. Because if you have anything, I'll, I'll ask two or three more questions and I'm not going to ask any more because we've been on here three hours y'all. And what do you want me to ask? Seriously. Make them um, good. Come on. 
I know make, y'all got them hard ones. Yeah, make them good. Ask something that's not been asked before. I wasn't expecting he was going to tell me. I was on Justin's panel, and I wasn't expecting he was going to tell me to um, come on right now. <laughs> so, well, the reason, so look, just to clear this up, because I had already heard that somebody in that show popped off and said, well, he don't talk to a man. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not jumping on that show because that wasn't yeah. your show. That was his show that y'all oh. were in. I told you and made you a promise that I'd come talk to you. Yeah. Never promised them. Yeah. I understand that. So, yeah. And I did tell you, hey, <laughs> Yeah, and I, you said, how do you feel about that? And I said, yeah, I will do it, and I'll fire up a live right now. So I guess you thought I'd fire up a live right now, and I would. So they said, oh, let's go over there. So <laughs> it worked and out. See, fine. they 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 could have jumped in on on your on your show. I wouldn't have been upset with that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have cared. So well, Josh came over, and you know, and you know, but look, um, yeah, but see, I have to stop there, and then I had to come fire this one up over here. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, it's fine. It's confusing. But yeah. And then I was like, I have to go to the bathroom real quick. I better do that because I don't know how this is going to go. I really thought you were going to be mad at me for no. what I said. But anyway, I'm like, Ugh. but anyway, I had to get ready. I had to get prepared to put on my boxing gloves. <laughs> no, it, it, I mean, you put on boxing glove thing. This, you're walking into a slug fest. No, you, yeah, I, wasn't sure. I told you what I would do. And I'm, and I'm, and I've delivered. And I, like I said, you, you did. Know, you've got you got people out there want to ask a hard question. Tell and I got no problem still to this day. Tell them find me on Facebook. Yeah. You want to ask a question that wasn't answered in the show? Hit me up on Facebook. Send yeah. me a direct message. I'll answer you. Yeah. Tam just wants to know before we go. She does want to know what do you think should happen to the person if they did anything to Sebastian or 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 somebody took him out of the house? What do you think should happen to them? No, they should absolutely be punished to the fullest extent possible. I'm, I'm going to give you two answers. And the first answer is going to be exactly what mom said. Yeah. The legal system will do its due justice. Yeah. My non so legal issue is <laughs> just imagine what a mama bear does when her cubs are attacked. Yeah. And what a mama bear could do. Yeah. Just leave it at that. You know, I mean, it, it's, I'm not saying I'm going to hurt somebody. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the attacks. I mean, if you hurt our son and you just hope law enforcement gets a hold of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I will, I appreciate it. And, I, you know, I don't, <laughs> I know that y'all have been through a lot, and again, um, you know, I'm sorry for, you know, I had to ask you that, Katie, over there, but I wanted to know, and um, if I say something, I'm just going to ask it, and that's just the way that I am. Um, I don't mean to make your lives harder, um, but... You know, if you're answering questions on Facebook and groups and stuff like that, um, I think it's all fair, fair, kind of fair, fair game. Um, but I do want to be respectful about it. And I do want to continue to bring awareness. Um, all I can say is uh, I'm just human, too. And I just want to bring awareness to Sebastian. And hopefully somebody will see him or know what happened or come forward and get this taken care of where he can get back where he needs to be. So is there anything else y'all would like to say? Just thank you for helping spread the word and helping to search for my son. Yep. My prayers and thoughts go out to everybody. Not, we're all going to have our own differences of opinions, okay? But we pray and we have thoughts, and it's all in good kindness and good hearted. And we love you all. But thank you. And please keep spreading the word about Sebastian. Keep him in your thoughts, keep him in your hearts. 
and hopefully we'll get him home very very soon and we'll see about trying to do a big old welcome home bash <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely absolutely we're out of big public space for that yeah we're gonna hold the commissioner to that yep <laughs> <laughs> Uh, absolutely well i thank you for joining me and i i won't keep you long you know all night because i i know y'all are tired and everything and i just uh, i thank you for holding up to your end of the deal well like i said ma'am i uh man my word wanted you to know it and like i said anybody's available to ask me a question I'll answer them to the best of my ability as soon as I can. Um, you know, I mean, ultimately we are searching for Sebastian as a as a community. Everybody, you know. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And y'all, I appreciate everybody in here. My mods, I appreciate all the questions. I appreciate everything, and if any of y'all have any questions you you know you can find him on facebook you can message him that's how i got a hold of him and then i spoke with him in the um or i made a comment under um the hendersonville um facebook finding sebastian and there's i think there's more than one i'm probably signed up to all of them but anyway he he answered and he's answering and you know there's nothing that we can do except continue to pray pass out flyers pass these around talk about him keep his name out and continue to look they want you to continue to look search the properties that you've already searched he could have come back do everything that you can and if you see something say something please yeah. um yes anything um uh, contact Bobby Simmons at 1-800-TBI-FIND. He's the um, he's the investigator up there at TBI or uh, Brian Carter at 615-451-3838. Um, and, you know, we just, you know, it's still an Amber Alert. We have to get Sebastian Rogers found, period. And that's that. So I thank you all and I hope you have a great night. Y'all try to get some rest, okay? Yes, ma'am. You too. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, both of you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye y'all.